This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. company led by passionate folks eager to assist its customers during a transitional process that needs to be smooth. Call Essential Moving Experts at 844-368-5750 for all your local and long distance moving needs. You can rely on Essential Moving Experts. Mention the Big O Radio Show and get $150 off. Family owned and operated. They offer free 30-day storage, full service moving, fully licensed, bonded, and insured. Moving was never so easy. EssentialMovingExperts.com There is no need to drive around South Florida wasting valuable time looking for a new or certified pre-owned Acura. Go to the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States. Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. Purchase with pace and space in a dealership tailored to your needs. From home buying to providing that personal touch. Contact the 2020 Satisfaction Award winner Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. 888-776-5123 That's 888-776-5123 Or visit them at 15601 Pines Boulevard in Pembroke Pines. For over 16 years, EJDConstruction.com has provided South Florida residents quality craftsmanship, accurate project management, and exceptional service. That's why EJDConstruction.com is an A-rated member of Angie's List and the Better Business Bureau. When you're looking for the right custom home builder for additions or home remodeling, please call my friend Eric at 305-433-4843. That's 305-433-4843 for ejdconstruction.com When presenting an award to an employee, athlete, executive, or fantasy GM, make sure you call Orvieto's Awards and more. For 35 years, these custom award specialists have been providing plaques, trophies, custom framing, while providing state-of-the-art laser and computerized engraving, UV printing, and glass crystal etching. They do all their engraving and printing in-house for quality control. Call Charles at 305-949-8098 or visit them at orviettosawards.com. Vieto's Awards and more, where recognition is rewarding. Welcome to Canesware. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. With more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes, Welton Rayom is committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. At Welton Rayum, they don't get paid unless you win. They handle complex personal injury claims caused by the fault of another in both state and federal courts. They handle auto, trucking, motorcycle, slip and fall, and bicycle accidents. Call 954-966-4646. That's 954-966-4646. Welton Rayum can help.
statements or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, media group, Inc., ownership, management, sponsors, or website. When it comes to South Florida sports teams, very few in the media have witnessed, lived, and covered it like the Big O. Let's start the program dedicated to your favorite South Florida teams with a passion that's unmatched. The Big O Radio Show is on. Here's the Big O. Alrighty. Welcome aboard. Yes, we rocked and roll. The Black Jacks. Yes, everybody playing a little poker. Yes, sir. Right here in the poker room at Hylia Park. It is Thursday. They're all awake now. They're all awake now. So we have woken them up. They're ready to go. If anybody was half asleep in between a hand, they're awake right now. It is Thursday. Feeling good. Walked all by myself here. Drove here by myself. Well, actually, my wife was in the passenger seat. She still wanted to come for the first time and say, hey, you know, I know you're going to drive all the way to Hialeah, but let me go with you. And that's why I really were, you know, we started 3.30. If not, I would have been here for the 3 o'clock start. That'll be next week. Next week, the Thursday show will start back at 3 o'clock. It will not start any later. So I uh, went to therapy today, worked out the foot in all kinds of ways and everything. Uh, the belt, it hit the fifth hole. The fifth hole. So and now, now it's getting to the point where, you know, now you're going to start having like too much belt. And then, yeah, I got to go get now a smaller belt now. So I got to go search because I know I've got smaller belts somewhere. You know, that's the good thing about, about fat people. When you've lost weight, you kind of hold on to some of those skinnier clothes. Like today, I'm wearing skinnier jeans that I have the uh, smaller waists. And so I've got a couple that are smaller because when I was skinnier, and so they're like stashed. So I can actually like bring back some of those clothes. You know what I mean? I'm wearing all my XLs now, you know? So it's, uh, it's good, man. It's good. I don't know how much I've lost because I don't have a scale at home, but it's uh, definitely well over, uh, well over 30 pounds. I don't know what the hell it is, but I'm definitely losing because today I was like, oh, I went to the fifth hole on the belt and I was like, wow. And I was messing around with one and two. Okay, so I don't know what that means when you're at one and two and then you go all the way to five. That's uh, probably three sizes, I guess. Maybe. Is that what it means from one belt size? I have no idea. I'm not smart enough for that. Uh, That's not my thing. So I have. Huh? We'll go with that. Right. We'll go with that. Exactly. Or maybe half a size per per slot or something. I don't know what it is, but uh, uh, whatever it is, we uh, we feel much better and we were able to gingerly walk in today. So we're making no cane. And the wife isn't pushing me around anymore. No more cart, no more cane. And my therapy uh, doctor told me today, no more boot. So, because I could wear the boot during the day for a little bit, you know, the kind of, but I don't need it anymore, which is good. Brother, that therapy, man, when they start breaking up that cartilage inside your leg, holy shit. There was one part of my calf, she was digging in and it was like, ooh, man. Uh, but it was good. It was good. Definitely need it needed that uh needed that therapy so it's all good in the hood as they say uh let's see what we got here on the uh, chat board uh, a little roll call josh is in brian walters is in steven gonzalez loving the obj rumor third receiver would fit beautifully um lisa rose ray sosa lisa says not sure i want obj in my locker room but if he's low hanging fruit and the giants version of obj we can kick the tires i would much rather go for it uh for thomas or renfro well definitely not thomas i'm not a michael thomas guy actually um he fits but he's he's actually might be even a bigger problem than odell um believe it or not he might be a bigger problem than odell um so because the last couple years odell really hasn't been a problem you know michael thomas has got a uh a court case that he's uh dealing with right now you know from a a, an uh assault incident or or some kind of battery incident or something from the year before you know something like that so um no i'd stay away from michael thomas actually odell really doesn't do that kind of stuff he does the stupid stuff on the field and all that 
And, and you know, the, the, the stuff he did with the Giants, that was years ago. If you think about it with the Rams and the Ravens and all that lately, he's hasn't really been, you know, I, I'm going to get into that a second because I, I think people sometimes they listen to the show, but then they get kind of confused and they don't really understand how this show goes. Uh, think Blue Dodgers, Ray Sosa in, One-Eyed Jack, uh, Gus Gus 1388. Um, let's see. Uh, Jeremy, I'll get into that. Stuff. I'm not going to talk about that now, but I, I understand. Out of curiosity, how many ACDC shirts do you have? Oh, man, I want to say maybe eight or nine, something like that. You'll be able to see something. One of them you'll never see. I can show it to you on camera because I don't think I fit into my flick of the switch tour one. I don't think, I, I don't know if I still have my for those about to rock, like the real one, like the one from the Sportatorium. Because um, those are really skinny, man, you know. Dude, I was, I was a kid in those days. Uh, but yeah, I have, uh, I have a bunch of them. I, uh, about eight, I would say. Uh, so yeah, something like that. Can't wait. I want to see them one more time on this final tour. I need to see them one more time. One more time. Uh, Noel Dowd is in. Alex Palenzuela. Michael Austin. James Vivinetti. Uh, Brian Walters. Uh, Rosendo says, good afternoon, Big O Nation. Greet your problems and decisions with peace and calm. Use your inner wisdom to evaluate and make smart decisions for yourself. Thank you, Rosendo. Pat in Asheville, uh, Brett Dodger, uh, when you say wifey isn't pushing you around, you mean figuratively or literally? Ah, both. Uh, J-Town is in. So let me ask you, Sean, open up the mic there. You know, I just want to ask you one quick question. Yes. You've been with me for how long now? Uh, how long we've been working together now? Two, three, about five. About four, five years. Four to five years, I guess, yeah. You ever hear me praise and love uh, Odell Beckham? No, I don't believe I ever have. No, no. Uh, like, I, I don't think I've ever been in Odell Beckham's corner ever, right? Not <laughs> like, yeah, you know. So what do you think when yesterday on the show, you know, if you were listening yesterday on the show, I'm not sure if some of you were and if you were, and well, you know, I'm sorry you didn't get the breaking news. You know what I mean? So I come out of nowhere with a, you know, who would be a good option for the Miami Dolphins? Odell Beckham. And if you know me, if you listen to me, if you pay attention, I've never been an Odell Beckham guy. So for me to pull that out of nowhere, you should have kind of picked up on it. Barry Jackson obviously did. And, you know, a couple hours later, after my segment, a couple hours later, there goes a tweet from Barry. Well, Dolphins are interested in Odell Beckham. And I'm like, yeah, really? Wow. I wonder why I talked about, out of all people in the world, I talked about Odell Beckham, a guy that I would never talk about. And, you know, when you get some vibes from the building and – I flat out said, are you out of your mind? You know, and then I kind of got some information. And if you listen, you got to listen to the show. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, and there's always information that I'm passing on one way or another on this show. And it's not by chance, dude. I don't do this by chance. There's too many instances. They cannot be by chance. It's impossible to have this amount of luck. Okay? Impossible. So, you know, it, it, there's a reason why I talked about it. There's a reason why I broke it down yesterday and talked about a guy that I have. You can go back and look at the videos and the history of the show and you will not see me praising o Odell Beckham whatsoever. But in the role that we talked about, in the way I broke it down from salary incentives to opportunities, and all, like some dude on Twitter yesterday put, oh, man, that would be awesome, Odell, Tyreek, and Waddle. And I said, no, 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 try Tyreek, Waddle, Janu, then 
Odell and the running backs. You know, that's kind of the way it really goes. But it's just one of those things that you you got to listen, dude. You know what I mean? You had to, some of you had to have picked it up when I talked about it yesterday. Like, how is this guy talking about Odell Beckham? Why would he be talking about O has ripped Odell Beckham? O has ripped O for years. That's what you should have been saying to yourself if you really follow this show. You had to have scratched your head and said, what the hell is this guy talking about? And there's a reason why I'm talking about it. Out of the blue. Out of the absolute blue. It should have thrown you off. You know what I mean? And so, you know, so now it's got a life of its own and all that. And, you know, and yeah, good for Barry, bro. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just whatever. It's all good in the hood. I know what I know, you know, so it's just, it's, it's just one of those things. And in the circumstances that I explained, I understand it. I, I understand it. I understand the move. I totally understand the move. You know what I mean? And, and so even though I may not be a fan, I totally understand the move if it happens. Okay. Again, the, the, the unknown is what kind of money they really want and what kind of incentives are really going to settle for and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we'll see what happens. We'll see, if it, we'll see if it works out. But it's just one of those where if you really follow the show yesterday, I should have thrown you for a curve. Because if you've listened to the show long enough, you've never heard me praise that guy ever in my life. Ever, ever. You, you only find segments there where I'm ripping him, if anything, for his unprofessionalism and stuff like that. But as I was explained, you know, think about it. Last couple of years, is he fighting with kicking nets? Is he proposing to them? Is he fighting with the receiver out on the, or a cornerback, I'm sorry, out on the field? No, is he skipping meetings or, or weekends and going, you know, South Beach on a boat in jeans, you know? And so if you think about it, really none of those kind of antics, you know, is some of the stuff that I was reminded of yesterday or night before, actually. Uh, so it was just one of those things. By the way, I sat on it for a while. <laughs> I think about it because <laughs> after I said it, Barry got it like a couple hours later, you know? It's like that. It's you know what it is. It's like that thing. Like I knew Flores didn't want to, but I couldn't say anything until you know. And I knew who he wanted and everything, but I couldn't say it. I could. I was sworn to it. And then finally, Omar was the one that figured it out locally. He was the first one to figure out something that I knew like a year before. You know, but it's just that's the that's the kind of it. It should have thrown you off yesterday. When I brought him up, it should have been a curve. Like, why is he talking about this guy? I don't want this guy. Like Lisa, this is the Lisa response is the, is the number one response. If we had a family feud, ding, 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 ding. Out of 100 points, the one that would chew up like 87 points and the rest of the 13 would be left for the other four is Lisa. Not sure I would want OBJ in my locker room, but he is low-hanging fruit. So, you know, she immediately, you know, and that's what I said to myself. I was like, eh, and I was, and when I'm talking with the people, I'm like, uh, are you sure you want to do, you want to try this? But this dude, and, 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 well, look at it lately. Is he doing any of that? No. It's kind of been all right lately, you know? And not going to be a full-time player. Oh, true. Okay, I get it. And speed, you know, we know Mike McDaniel is, you know, top gun three. I feel the need, the need for speed, right? So I get, you know, I totally understand it. But you that listen to the show, the one, the, especially the hardcore ones that listen every day, you should have picked up on it. You should have picked up on it, man. I mean, you know? 
It's just, it, it's just, it was right there for you. I just, I gave you low hanging fruit. I gave you low hanging fruit. You know, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I haven't heard anything. Have you heard anything yet? Nothing, right? I'm, uh, I'm working it to see, you know, but um, working it. Uh, that's all I can tell you. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, Beast Mode. Thank you for the love and the super chat. That is very nice of you, sir. Big O is a dog, and he gave me a number one. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you very much. That is very nice of you. Um, if uh, someone would have said we should get him in the chat board, you would roast that person like a pig at a Hispanic party. That's right. Guilty as sin. Guilty as sin. But I'm always willing to take in information to assess my opinion. And... I, if the gamble's really not that much, we kind of know Greer already. And Lisa knows the, you all know the term. It's three words. It's three words. If he really has interest, it's all about low hanging fruit. Yo, dog, remember what I, what did I say yesterday? I mean, it's like, I don't want to repeat the entire segment, but it's not coming here to be a one or a two. You're not paying him to be a savior. You're not paying him to lead your offense. You're paying him to be a complimentary piece. So if that's the case, then it should be affordable. By the way, I love the River Craycraft move. Love him. Love him as a blocker. Love him as a route runner. Uh, they should throw to him more. They don't throw to him enough. Uh, I hope this is the year where, where McDaniel spreads the ball around more. I want to see more. So, yes, sir. What do you got? Yeah. So for those betting on the uh, March Madness starting today? Oh, yes, yes. Somebody has tweeted out, Warren Sharp. Seems like the HBO Max broadcast of these games is a good nine seconds earlier than YouTube TV, if you're live betting. Ooh, that's very important. A nice job by Warren <laughs> Sharp. Staying sharp, Warren. Very nice. Very nice. That's very important. Very important. That's 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 solid, solid advice right there. Nine seconds in basketball. Fucking Reggie Miller killed you in nine seconds. Okay, all right, all right. Youngins, do your homework so you can ca catch up to what I meant by there with nine seconds. Okay. What number eleven, Duquesne beat uh, number six. Who was six? Who was it? Oh, BYU. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. And Duquesne is, is coming to notoriety because that's LeBron's, I guess, uh, high school coach is their coach now, and he gifted them all shoes or whatever ah. yesterday, and then they went on to win today. All right. My boy Eric is probably a little disappointed with BYU losing if he's watching. Him and Rolintha. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, let's see. Steven Gonzalez, thank you for the love, my brother. Robbie Ralph. Dude, 67, Brian Walters. Do you think it's because of the Tyreco situation? No, 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 no. It's it's to add another weapon and a weapon that will not break your bank at all. And so that's kind of what it is, you know? There's no way OBJ is replacing Tyreek production. No. No. And you can't. Again, you're not signing him to no, no, exactly. depend saying, on but, him. But if you're thinking that in, in yeah. is like as an insurance policy type thing, I still think it's way off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bad insurance policy. Yeah, that insurance policy will fail you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so let's see. Uh, am I talking about Beckham? Uh, I don't know. You tell me, Brian. Uh, the Kardashian curse is real, bro. Don't do it. I'm not the one doing it. You know, I'm just talking about what I hear. Uh, I think I would prefer Tyler Boyd. Yeah, but he's going to cost you more, I think. I'm pretty sure he would. He would cost you more, and I would prefer Tyler Boyd. I'm with you there, okay? But I kind of understand this gamble. You know what I'm saying? I understand it. Super Boom Shack, I would rather have old man duper than OBJ at this point. I, you know, I understand. 
I understand people being negative about it. I do. I totally do. Because I'm there. I was there with you. And then I kind of was walked off the ledge. So, yes. Follow up on one of your stories from yesterday. Yes, sir. You talk about uh, the cornerback from the Lions, mm -hmm. Cam Sutton, who was being searched. Oh, yes. Being searched for. Yeah. He's now been released by the Detroit Lions. Ah, okay. So, there you go. You figure it was coming down the line probably, but he's no longer I was the Lions why, cornerback. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yo, this guy's – there's a manhunt for him. They're like, what more proof do you need? You know, if you're innocent, you you stand on every tall building and hire the proper people and say, hey, I'm innocent. But when you're on – and there's a manhunt for you, yeah, something's going on here, dude. Something's going on in your life. So – uh let's see fernando perez for dolphins info thank you i appreciate you my brother thank you thank you uh nick cosa nostra how's it going big o please don't sign obj dolphins uh, you know i i, I am not going to i'm not going to try to talk any of you off of that because you all might be right you know what i'm saying you all might be right but if it's what i hear it's you're not really going to get anything better than that. You know, not with that kind of speed that can help you out. The dude averaged like 16 yards a catch. Um, can I say something in his defense? God. Yeah, but... So now you're defending him? Well, it's defending him. <laughs> it's defending him while consistently trashing the other guy. I saw a lot of Ravens games this year, like I normally do, because it affects the Dolphins, you know, and Lamar missed him a bunch. He might have had a few more catches if it wasn't for Lamar's lack of accuracy. Just, I'm just stating the facts. Okay, I actually watched the games. There are actually a few times where all of them, all his receivers are open, and he, they all would have better stats if he was actually more accurate that's the scary part and, and and the guy doesn't even throw the ball a ton if he threw it more it'd be even more of a disaster so you know i want a uke come on super boom shack bro drop the crack pipe <laughs> you, you, nobody's gonna pay for waddle tyreek and a uke come on man yeah, I mean, it's just, see, that's where you guys just get stupid, and it just, it makes zero sense whatsoever. Oh, with a changing heart, you want OBJ? What is the world coming to? It's not that I want him. I understand the gamble, okay? I didn't want Whiteside, but I understood the gamble. Okay, let's put it that way. It's just that, the same example. Except that one was a lot more money and it's guaranteed and it's a long term contract. There's one year. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, it's, but I understand if the, if the gamble is what I understand, then I get it. I get it because it's not going to be that much of it. When you saw the contract for uh, Fuller, it was a pretty, right? It, when it's broken down, because if he doesn't come through in the first year, they kind of got a way to get out a little bit more in the second year where they're not as – you know, they – Brandon Shore and these guys, they construct smart deals to try to get out. You know what I'm saying? So they create flexibility. I, I This is the part of Dolphin fans that frustrate me. I don't think they appreciate the front office all the way through, from talent through through contracts and everything. They do an excellent job overall excellent job they've got to get the coaching part straightened out you know and some luck at the end of the year with the stinking injuries the last two years you know but i think the dolphin front office is exceptional all the way through talent and contract and salary cap and management and all that now compared to the shit we had before with, with tannenbaum and that mess that 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 reminds me having tannenbaum run your team is like having biden and trump run your team Run it right into the ground. You know what I'm saying? Two guys that don't know what the hell they're doing. That's exactly what it's like. Just like it. These guys actually know what the hell they're doing. They're not going to run it into the ground. The last clown we had is like the two clowns that we've put in the office. You know? What happened? Uh, I still got Hassan Whiteside jersey. Yeah, that's, uh, that was not a good decision on your part. 
That definitely wasn't. What what happened? Just double checking here. Lewis Jones jumped on and said no sound. We're good, right? Because everybody's answering no, so I'm guessing yeah, Lewis, everybody's hearing them. Uh, Lewis. All right, Lewis, so I don't know what's going on with you, but I mean, seriously, Lewis, what's going on with you, bro? How come you – Jesus, come on, Lewis. <sighs> uh, who's the next Dalvin Cook? <laughs> What 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 would Josh Reynolds be too expensive or does he lack the speed they want? Yeah, I don't think that's the kind of guy they're looking for. It doesn't look like it. They keep looking for speed. You know what I mean? Because uh the one gentleman that mentioned Tyler Boyd, I love Tyler Boyd. He's not a blazer, but he's a good receiver, dude. And he would be a beautiful number three. Maybe he wants a little more money, wants a shot at a number two somewhere, gets more rep. I don't know what he's holding out for or whatever, but um it, they they have they have a, a they have a a thing they're looking for and obj fits what you already have and that's kind of what they like i don't get it but whatever you know it is what it is and and they solidified their quote unquote possession receivers with barrios and river craycraft now yeah and that's then you are, your... and you have Janu. yeah you have one of the three fastest tight ends in the yeah. nfl mm -hmm. So you have a guy that's going to get separation there. And if o OBJ is your fourth guy at times, yep. who the hell on the fourth on the fourth fourth corner or safety is going to stay with OBJ? No. You know, it's not going to happen. So maybe it also gets um, uh, Mike to design plays for other players not named Tyreek, which would be nice. You know, it's great to get the ball to Tyreek, but it's too much Tyreek. You wear the man out. He's going for the silly 2000. We'll get to that shit again. He doesn't need that, bro. You need to spread the ball around. You need to be more, um, what's it called, um, uh, unpredictable. And, and when Tyreek goes out on a route, there's two, three guys on top of him. So that means there's other guys open. So if you have John Lewis Smith out there running and Waddle and OBJ and Craycraft and Berrios and the running backs, I want to see these people catch the football. That's what I want to see. Spread the ball around, please. And maybe it, they're afraid also that if they don't have the line that can hold in a, long enough, you need people that can get open right away. So you add OBJ to it along with Jonu Smith. These are people along with Waddle and Tyreek that can all get open right away. They can shake people right away and get open, and and Tua can find them right away, and boom. So you don't have to always go to Tyreek. It can be to any of the other guys. And by the way, here's the other thing that comes with the whole uh, OBJ thing that a, a lot of people aren't looking at. Year one of Waddle. How much did he play on inside there, uh, Sean? Quite a bit, right? And OBJ pretty much as an outside receiver all the time. So you can make three receiver sets where Waddle goes inside and does a lot of the things he did the first year with Tua. There's already a relationship of short yardage success between those two. And then you have Tyreek and OBJ and you have Janu and Waddle creating havoc in the middle. You know, you have to start thinking about it and then say, okay, if the risk isn't bad, well, then maybe it is worth trying it. You know what I mean? Because there's different things you can do with him and you can move things around because Waddle is the guy that has the toughness and he also has, you know, the, the twitch to be able to go left and right from the slot. And then you've got Janu, which now you've got a real threat. These are things you didn't have in the offense last year. So this is what they're trying to inject in the offense this year. And that's why. And so if your line doesn't hold up for three seconds, so Tua can find a second and third option, well, then let's put four fast options out there, and he can make a decision to any of them within that first read. Comprende, compadre? It's not that he can't go to the second or third or fourth. It's that he needs to have time to get to the second, third, or fourth. But when you're missing most of your offensive line, you're not going to get to your second or third. At the beginning of the year, if everybody's healthy, now he's going to have time to get to his second and third options. 
But if you start losing all your linemen like you did last year and you got a bunch of backups and hell, Eichenberg filling in was playing on one leg. You're not going to have time. So let's have a security blanket that if that happens again to us, we have more fast people out there so we can make quicker decisions. And it's not just one guy or two guys. Now we have four. Okay. You got to think big picture of what they're trying to do and what Mike is thinking. You have to put yourself in Mike's shoes. And that's kind of what I'm, I'm kind of putting you in that room of what they're thinking. Okay, and that's where the Odell Beckham thing makes sense because it's a quick twitch guy, gets open quickly, just like Jonu Smith, just like the other two guys that you have on the team. No one else was like that. Not Craycraft, not Claypool, not Cedric Wilson, not Azukama, not uh, Smythe, not Justin Hill. Is it Justin Hill? Julian Hill. Uh, not Certainly not Tyler Croft. You know, no, there were no quick twitch players at all. It was just those two guys. So now you've added four. Okay? Well, you've added three. Because Janu will be able to shake any safety or linebacker out there. We'll see what happens if you're able to sign Odo Beckham. And if you're not able to sign Odo Beckham, then you look for the draft to find another receiver that might be a speed receiver. That might be an option for them. Okay? Make sense out there? Make sense for you? Okay? Uh, let's see for a moment. Big O was in Russia. <sighs> um, Sean Lewis is smoking some of that good stuff. Well, pass bro. What's wrong with you? Jesus. Sharing is caring. Unless you're that teacher that did you see a teacher that got arrested for like sex with like 12 or 13 students over her time there. I was, uh, that's taking sharing. Sharing is caring to, you know, another level. Um, what else do we have here to all those OBJ haters? If there's no news as of now, that means they're, they're not signing him. He's not right now. Uh, remember maybe physical and all that kind of stuff that takes a while too. We should get Justin Jefferson as a third receiver. Hell yeah. Let's go, baby. A couple food stamps. We'll sign them up quickly. Yeah, that's it. Kelsey or Kittle at tight end. I mean, yeah, no, let's do it. I like it. If the Dolphins don't want to uh, bring a running back, at least bring one of the pigs from the fair last night for motivation. I mean, you know, some of those pigs can carry the ball. I, I put out I put out a Miami's future running back on Twitter. I don't know if you guys saw it. Did you see that guy jumping off the Whataburger uh, roof? And, oh, you could put it, pull it, pull up the Twitter uh, and let's show the folks. The new dolphin running back. This guy's jumping off Whataburger and, and truck uh roofs and dodging cops like he's Barry Sanders. I'm telling you, we should sign that guy. Frankie, I'm gonna show you the future running back for the Miami Dolphins. They go worth 35 days from the first round pick of 2021 talking about dolphins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, Boyd is definitely gonna get a bigger contract, right? You are correct. Definitely. Uh, do we have actual passing plays not designed for Hill or Waddle? <laughs> Big up. The Dolphins trade back to 26 in the first round. What picks can we get? I don't know, dude. I'm not exactly sure what's the what's the deal. Um, oh, if you go down from 21 to 26, yeah, you'll probably pick up like some kind of a late second or third, early third or something like that. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea where I stole it from. The pitching one. Oh, but yeah, but that's a major league baseball one. That's not that's not this is just, you know, you're not gonna get tagged for this one. But but this is uh but 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 you were able to fix it right after. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, so um this is this is definitely the Dolphins' future running back, and if I'm Chris Greer, I am going to track this guy down and sign him because it only makes sense. These kind of moves are not found everywhere, okay, folks? You have to check this out because these kind of moves are special. I mean, when you're able to do stuff like this, 
Um, I'm not sure I've seen a Dolphin running back since maybe Ricky Williams. Uh, and, and let me tell you something. Even Ricky, I, I might have the shiftiness of Troy Stratford here. Okay? It might be the juking ability of Boston College's own Troy Stratford, rookie of the year. Offensive rookie of the year for the Miami Dolphins. This guy, brother, and his ankles are a hell of a lot stronger than, you know, Cecil Collins, who had bad ankles when he got in because he had a hole in his ankle. He also came in with some injuries. He had a lot of talent, but he did have like a, a bum ankle. This guy, no bum ankles, great hips, strong, great movement, shiftiness. Um, and, and by the way, think about this. This guy doesn't get to this guy literally comes from the second level. So for him to make it to the second level, he was already there in the first place. You know, so you're always wondering, can you break through the line and get to the second level as a running back? This guy right here is a master at it. So play it. Let's go. Why, why are we just going spinning and spinning here? The hell is wrong with you? Can't do it. When we, and by the way, I see that and I just want a Whataburger right now. The fact that he did it at a Whataburger is also like an honor, I got to say, because it's maybe one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Did you enlarge it first? Okay. Because I don't know. It's, what a shame. I mean, think about it. This guy is out in the open field, and there's at least 15 tacklers, and not one of them can touch him. I mean, I doubt we'll ever see it. Okay, well, then play it. See if it works. There we go. Look at this. Look at this. Bam, boom, boom. They're all over. Boom, 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 boom. He, he go. He go. I mean, let it play. This this is beautiful coming off the roof, boom, onto the car. Oh, we got him. We got him. No, you don't. No, you don't. And you saw he broke that arm tackle. You know, that was that. that's the other thing. I got to say, these guys, the firemen, they've never played football. Nobody went low. But I got to – props to him, dude. I mean, look at that. Look at the vision. Boom. Bam. Lands again. Cuts inside. He saw the hole as he was jumping and landing off the truck. Look at him, watch, he, he sees the hole, bam, cut. Look at that. That is Troy Stratford, if I've ever seen it in my life, right there. And then he had the, the bull rush of Ricky Williams breaking tackles. So I want this guy as our running back. I'm just saying, I mean, the talent is there. So let's hope that uh, let's hope they sign him because that guy is that's that's hall of that could be a hall of fame that could be a ring of honor guy. There's a lot. I mean, there's so much potential there. And and you know what? He's a street free agent. We don't even have to waste a draft. Oh, by the way, it doesn't go against our compensatory picks. He's literally street free agent. So like you know, there's a lot of positives to sign this guy. But that wasn't real stiff competition he was up against there. <laughs> I mean, uh, you're you're underestimating it. I mean, he's coming off a roof and a car. I mean, that's skills. Did you see the police officers that were chasing him? I I feel well, like we came out of I feel like we just watched a jackass scene. That's what I feel like we watched. They, they just they, they all ate like a, a triple Whataburger, yeah. bacon. They were running to get back to their cars to get the little Whataburger. Oh man, that was good. I'm telling you, that guy was uh, that was talent, bro. That was talent. Yeah. That, see, no doubt the jump cut. See, no doubt sees it. He sees it. Most people blow Achilles, knee injuries right there on that land cut. That guy, that was talent. Uh, big O, I actually wouldn't mind OB ODB. Uh, him and Hill on the outside, Watt on the slot with Janu and Achan and Moster coming off the backfield. Wow. Exactly. Uh, old dirty bastard, yes. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, ODB. No, no, we're getting ODB. We're getting the old dirty bastard. Yeah, baby. Uh, the, the, uh, if you guys ever want to trip out with old dirty bastard, old dirty bastard one day uh, got to um, pick up his 
was it WIC or food coupons or whatever in a limousine? Pulled up in a limousine. He was even filming it. I think it's on YouTube. You could find it. And uh, and he went to like pick up his like he he had signed up for like food stamps and WIC or whatever. And so he was picking up. <laughs> oh, rest in peace. Rest in peace, ODB. Uh, I've got three Whataburgers within two miles of my house. Trust me, the temptation is real. Emilio, I hate you. Just want you to know. I can't freaking stand you. Okay? I don't have any Whataburgers here. Like, that sucks. Like, you win big, bro. That is awesome. I'd like to have a Whataburger every once in a while. You know, now I've got my lifestyle change, so I can't eat it every day, but it's something that I could treat myself every once in a while. What a burger would be awesome. Change it up, man. We don't have one here in town. I like what a burger. Uh, hip drop tackles are prohibited in most fire departments. Oh, that's, that's a key fact there. Pat in Nashville, he, he stumped you there. You know, but now apparently he, two hand touches too. <laughs> I can't, but they could have gone low. I don't know. I don't know. They, they did have improper technique. I would have to go with that. I don't think anybody laid a hand on the guy. Oh no, no, no! At the top, yeah, somebody. Oh, he broke some tackles. Oh, he shook him off. I know he stiff armed the one away from he him, and then shook him off, and then he ran right across the. He's ice. Yeah, he no, picked he, up speed yes. across that 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 part. Yes, line. yes. I mean, the forty time would be good. Uh, when you're scared from the cops, it adds like a second yes. to, to anybody's. We anybody. are not doing that time on the calendar. Anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. You're going to run a second faster in that 40 if cops are chasing you. Two seconds faster if it's a dog. Because, you know, that's it's no fun to get bit in the ass. Cosa Nostra says, uh, what's better? What, what a burger or In-N-Out burgers? Oh, no, I'm going In-N-Out burgers. No, definitely In-N-Out burgers. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, you know what? I'll take over both Burger Fi. Oh, Dairy Queen hot dogs for sure. Burger. I love Burger Fi. You should go. Love it. Love their sauce. I actually, oh, by the way, Mr. Plain Jane, I uh, like their sauce. Okay. And, uh, and, and by the way, they're like, you know, pure corn fed beef and all that. So it's like uh, high quality meat and their fries are to die for. They are the best fries out of all these places. Oh, the burger Fi fries are awesome. I like burger Fi a lot, really enjoy burger Fi. but, uh, yeah, um, I can eat an in and out burger pretty much every day. It's kind of what we do in Vegas. When we go to Vegas, it's in and out Burger all the time. Uh, let's see. Charm City Burger in Deerfield is solid. Never tried it. Maybe I will one day. I saw that, uh, Ray Sosa. I saw um, Tyreek Hill posting 2K. And let me tell you something. If you want, you can pull up the tweet there. I, pull, I posted it. And I think it's just a bunch of crap. Um, and, and I think, look, I get Tyreek wants his own personal motivation and all that bullshit. Uh, I, how about team success? How about you focus on catching a lot of the important footballs you drop? Cause you're not dropping a first down play in the first quarter. You're dropping a touchdown. You're dropping a fourth quarter touchdown. You're dropping a fourth quarter, third or fourth down. You're dropping key balls in key moments that are deciding games like you single-handedly, Tyreek, lost the game against Kansas City the first time around last year. Okay? So, for me, plus, going for 2,000, where's out Tyreek? He's a human being. As, as much as he's the cheetah, as much as he's a badass, as much as he's a great player, the best thing that Mike McDaniel does at times is use Tyreek as a decoy. Because if there's going to be two or three people covering him, then I want Waddle and Janu Smith and anybody else that's that can catch the ball. Please catch the ball and help move the chains. I want you to run the ball more. I want you to stop giving up on the run when it's working. So there should be no reason to get 2,000 yards for Tyreek Hill. Okay? This is a bunch of horse shit. Tyreek Hill should be focused on his personal life 
and he should work on being a better wide receiver down in and down out. Not 2,000 yards. That doesn't make the team better. Okay? What makes the team better is when the team is contributing because it, it's got to suck for Berrios and Craycraft and all these guys to continually run routes and not get a damn ball. That's not a lot of fun. That doesn't keep you focused. You got to spread the ball around. They they did a better job of spreading the ball around under Brian Flores. That's ridiculous. That makes no sense. Brian Flores can find a way to get Gesicki 70 balls, but you can't? You can't get seven to him? Bro, that's an embarrassment. What kind of a coach are you? You're, you're actually not a very good one yet. You know, great offensive mind, not a great head coach. So Mike McDaniel needs to grow, needs to needs to needs this offense to evolve. And Tyreek Hill needs to focus on himself, his person. Lord, he needs to focus on his personal life first and foremost. Please focus on your personal life, bro, because you make all kinds of terrible decisions. Okay? And then, you know what? How about being a better receiver, bro? Being a better football player. It ain't about yards. I don't care if you get to 2,000 yards and you, you, you ended up costing the team a couple games and you drop footballs in key moments. That don't mean shit to me. So let's stop dropping those key passes. You start fixing your off-the-field life. Oh, and by the way, one more thing, Tyreek. Don't worry about Tua. He doesn't need to change. He's all right where he's at. You need to change. Okay? You need to change. Don't try to change others. Look in the mirror, my man. You're the one that's got to change. So you got to figure it out, man. Your motivation should be that you want the Dolphins to win the Super Bowl. That's what I should hear. I want to compete for the Super Bowl. I want to win playoff games. Not I want 2,000 yards. You sound like a college player that is just worried about his next NIL check. Okay? It's about winning here right now. It's not about stats. We've seen Ricky Williams rush for, was it, 1,800 yards? Right? Some ridiculous number. We've watched Dan Marino throw for the 5,000 yards before anybody else and the 40, 48 touchdowns, whatever the hell it was. We saw him throw for 4 billion touchdowns. You know, we've watched all kinds of records over the years. It's not about records, bro. It's not about just Jason Taylor getting the sack record or defensive player of the year. Those things are nice, but it's about team success. That's what Dolphin fans really want to see. I, I, I've I talked about this a lot last year. I don't care about individual accomplishments anymore. That shit bores me, dude. That shit bores me. I'm a Dolphins fan. I need to see Dolphins success, team success. I just don't care about individual success anymore. It's nice, but it doesn't mean shit to me. Because in the end, what did I do with Ricky Williams' 1,800 yards? Nothing. Not a goddamn thing. You know? It doesn't matter to me anymore. I need more than that. I need team success. I need players focused on team success, not individual success. And when I saw that today on the uh, on on social media, I was like, "This is a joke." It's like you 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 don't learn. You don't learn. You know, same shit. You hear Tua saying, I got to throw for 5,000 yards? Ever? You hear Marino say that? Marino didn't give a shit about that. Marino wanted to win. You think he gave he, I've I covered Marino, okay? So I covered games where he threw for three, 400 yards, and he lost. And he didn't, he didn't give a shit. You, if, you if you ask Marino about his stats... 
brother, he'd look at you sideways. Like, you think I'm going to talk about me personally? First of all, he never did. Even when shit was going well, he, he did not want to brag about himself ever. Okay? Maybe behind the scenes, he you know, different person. But in public, that wasn't him. So most players, most great players, aren't really are focused on just their, you know, singular stats. Because in the end, that means you're not focused on the grand prize. And so the grand prize is start playing, start winning playoff games. And I saw that today with the whole 2K there, and you know, Sean brought it up, and it's just ridiculous, dude. It's ridiculous. Plus, it wore him out. Which he's not a big guy, man. He carries enough of the load. It's not really smart, actually, to go for the 2,000 yards. Smart is to spread the ball around. Uh, I hate to say it, but I don't think Hill is putting out BS. Last year, he saw he was close to 2K and would have gotten 2K if he didn't get injured. Some things never change. Exactly. Uh, we need to find a replacement for... <laughs> There's still... <laughs> Emilio, get off of cloud nine, bro. He won't be around longer, too unpredictable. Yeah, he'll be here two more years, and then they'll move on. And then Waddle will become your one. And I would imagine that there's going to be a receiver drafted in the next year or two. Okay? In the next two drafts, there'll be a receiver drafted that will start to get groomed to be the number two that, to run next to Waddle when you let go of Tyreek. Because in two years, Waddle's big money will then take over. So you're out of Tyreek's big money, although you'll take a cap hit. But then you'll you'll get out of it as uh, you know pretty quickly, uh, and then so you'll have the 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 cycle going, and that's kind of what you want to do. So it's two more years, whether you like it or not. There will be no no cutting, no trading, none of that stuff. All right, so don't expect any of that. Okay, don't expect any of that. Uh, Big O, I think Tyreek holds to a back because he forces the ball to him much. Well, but it's also the coach that he's play designing to Tyreek all the time, too. So it kind of goes both ways. Yeah, I, I've said it. One thing that I'd like for Tua to do next year is uh, sometimes say, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to go somewhere else and, uh, and start doing that. So because if you want 2,000 yards, you're going to be in the huddle wanting the ball. You know? Costa says, excellent sermon, Big O. Accolades are nice. <laughs> um, yeah, Tyreek has been a distraction. You know, that's you can't we can't argue that dude 67. Unfortunately, we have to look at it that way. That's my point. I'm not saying this year get rid of him. I'm looking two two years down. No, two years down the line, it's it, I already told you he's here for two more years. Then they move on. So that's pretty much in the bank. I still worry McDaniel needs to design spreading the ball around. I like the additions we have so far. McDaniel still has to prove he can uh, he can play with all the guys. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, let's uh, let's get to uh, you know we like uh, choosing an MVP of the night. And last night the Miami Heat uh, they uh, eked one out against the Cavs. Uh, Cavs uh, made it really interesting. Miami fought through, uh, but we got to give our Cutters Edge Pro. MVP of the night to one specific player. Let's do it. Who's last night's MVP? For your complete landscape solutions anywhere in South Florida, there's only one MVP. CuttersEdgePro.com Here's our CuttersEdgePro.com MVP of the night. We got to go with Terrible Terry. I mean, Butler carried the team throughout, and then Terry just drove the nail into the coffin with those final 10 points, the big four-point play. Uh, just uh, one big three after another, five of six from three-point range, ended with 24 points, but the, the points that won the game, basically. You know what I'm saying? Uh, obviously, kudos to Jimmy. He played his ass off yesterday. So he produced 30 points, had four steals in the game. I mean, he, you know, he did his part. But it was nice to see a guy take over and say, give me the damn ball. I'm going to make some plays. And that's, that's, where, that's, that's what they don't have enough of 
Yeah, and I Rogier's not a guy that's going to do that every night because he's not that great of a shooter, but he has it in him and he's fearless. And you got to have that. And they don't have another star, but for a few moments last night, Terry Rogier played like a star. Uh, and William Quigley and the folks at Cutter's Edge Pro, they are always stars. They do it all tree trimming and removal, landscape design, outdoor lighting, irrigation design and builds, synthetic turf. Call them. Go check out the Instagram page at Cutter's Edge Pro. You're going to see a lot of their work before and after. You are going to be wowed. And let me tell you, artificial turf is very important, especially if you have dogs. You're going to love it. It always looks great. You're going to save hundreds and thousands in the long run because the maintenance is you're not watering and cutting the grass. But if you have dogs, it is an absolute savior. Reach out to the great people at Cutter's Edge Pro. If you live anywhere in Dade, Broward, or Palm Beach counties, they've got over like 70 trucks. It's, I mean, it's it's an enormous company. They do great work. They do a lot of they do a lot of uh, community work, also helping a lot of charities. They, the, the Cutter's Edge Pro is in the right place, and they do a lot here in South Florida. Pillar of South Florida. So check out William Quigley and Mike and all the great people. Nine five four. 472-0622. Terry Rogier, our Cutter's Edge Pro MVP of the night. The MVP of the night is brought to you by CuttersEdgePro.com. Servicing HOAs, condominiums, townhomes, commercial properties, corporate parks, and malls throughout South Florida. CuttersEdgePro.com. Providing South Florida MVP performance every day of the year. All right, all right. Let's get to our 3A graphics sports calendar. Last night, Miami beat the Cavs 107 to 104. Uh, Butler again led the way 30 points, four rebounds, five assists, four steals, and Terry Rozier was just awesome. Tomorrow, they will take on New Orleans and, uh, and, and Zion, which uh, one of our listeners is a hardcore Zion fan. So we'll see what happens tomorrow night. I'm sure we'll hear from them if they win. Uh, 7.30 tonight, Amrit Bank Arena. The Predators are visiting the Panthers. Panthers are favored by a goal and a half, plus 136 there. Uh, Predators, minus 120. And uh, uh, for uh, over and under, uh, six goals. Uh, Predators are plus 154 right now in the money line, and the Panthers are minus 185. Katie Meyer, after 19 years, is retiring as the Winningest coach in women's basketball history for the Miami Hurricanes. She will step down and become a special advisor. Uh, you think about it, Katie, Katie Meyer and Fern Labadi, man, two exceptional basketball coaches, man. Uh, just mad, mad props. And uh, Tuesday, uh, Nova Southeastern is back in action in the Elite Eight, taking on uh, Southern New Hampshire University, and that'll be next Tuesday. So we'll get to that next week, but that is your 3A Graphics Sports Calendar. Call my guy, Alan Blanco, 786-618-1443. Custom printing and embroidery, hats, shirts, magnets, calendars, whatever you need, man. Uniforms, you name it, whatever you need for your business, your club, your fantasy league, whatever, man. Uh, reach out to 3A Graphics Sports Calendar. They are absolutely phenomenal. A rat, a rat, a rat. Uh, if Zion has a terrible game tomorrow, you won't hear from that guy who was saying you criticize Zion too much. Yeah, well, I mean, Zion doesn't stick around, you know? He's got to stay healthy for once in his life consistently. Uh, Big O, when are you going to do a podcast with Omar and Poopart? I have no no plans for it, so I have no idea. I've not been invited to go do a podcast with them. Uh, Big O, the Dolphins should make you their offensive coordinator because you seem to understand how the offense should be used. Or sometimes I hear about how the offense should be used. Um, let's see. Don't bring in that drama queen, says Mark Askew. Uh, again, I am not going to, you know, you might be a thousand percent right on that one. So, you know, uh, big O, should the Dolphins? Uh, uh, I usually try to interpret if and when your posts are being facetious. Oh, right, to oh, this is to true fin. Okay, are you going to do a live broadcast for the first round of the draft? I don't know yet. Maybe you know what? I don't think so. 
if we sell it at a bar, which we haven't even uh, started, uh, I haven't been able, I can't walk. Now I can walk. Now I can actually start like doing some work. Um, maybe if I could get it at a bar, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do the first round. I'll do the first and second round. I can do two nights. Uh, but if we don't and we're in studio, I'll just do the pick. Uh, and then recap that pick. And that's probably what I'll do. I'm not going to sit around and talk hours. Um, no, I need to get paid to do that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit around and just talk hours leading up to the draft. So it's got to be something that is, you know, sponsored and all that kind of stuff. If it is, then I'll do it. If it's not, then I'll just pop in and, and do the pick and then pop out. And I'll, I'll, I'll at least do that for you guys. But that's about it. Um, Let's see. Zion has been pretty much amazing this year and healthy, but it's only one year. What? It's not one year yet. Relax. It's not one year yet. Okay. We haven't finished the season. We got playoffs, you know, so, and he's missed games. I, I think he's missed games, bro. I think he's missed a few games too. He's had, he hasn't played the whole year. I think, I think I'm pretty sure of that, that he's missed a few games. Maybe not as much as he used to miss, but he's missed games. Uh, oh, the front office and McDaniel was full force at UT uh, today. Worthy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Speed. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Okay, that's it. Uh, don't forget, by the way, you can make a donation, Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That is Cash Big O Show. Cash App or Venmo, Cash Big O Show. By the way, where are we at? And you can make a Bitcoin donation. Also, Cash Big O Show. Jasmine, by the way, bounced back strong. It's at 13.5%. It was even a little higher uh, today. Bitcoin, by the way, after hitting right around 67.5, 68 yesterday, uh, it, it's dropped now between 65 and 66 all day today. It's at 65.5. So, uh, holding pretty strong. And that's probably because we still have some more grayscale outflows, which is what's been going on a lot uh, overall. 12 games? Okay. And they've played how much? 68, 12 games. So, yeah. So he's missed a fifth of the games already. Okay. You know. Um, like I said, not the whole year. You know, I, I, I got to, we got to call it like we see it, dude. Now's when they announced the 32 minutes ago, they announced the Braxton burials with officially the dolphins. Yeah. Cause he has to pass the physical, sign the contract, all that, all that stuff. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we are at Hialeah park. Remember we're giving away a brand new Mustang. And it's downstairs, an electric Mustang, okay? And every time you play the loosest slots in the state, which is, of course, documented, uh, you get entries. So come on down. You, you might win anyways with the loosest slots, you know, in, in the state. And then at the same time, you're getting entries, which they give it away at the end of the month. It's on a Saturday night, March 30th, I believe, right? March 30th, Saturday night. And it's at 1 a.m., which is really, you know, early Sunday night, you know what I'm saying? But it, you got to be here Saturday night. You got to be here live at 1 a.m. for the drawing, okay? Because you, you get to, like, drive away with it, like, right away if you win, okay? So you can come because maybe you'll watch Sean, my wife, maybe myself drive away with it, you know? <laughs> We're not employees, so we are eligible, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, my man Steve is not eligible. I'm not eligible, no. But we are eligible, okay? We've been trying, bro. We've been trying. So earn, earn entries all month. I know. March first till March thirtieth. You can earn entries every day. Every day. Every single day. Every single and day. And maybe you win while you're earning entries. Yep. It's possible. So I tell you the name Odell Beckham and you say Hey they. <laughs> so I'm uh uh cautiously optimistic. <laughs> I guess it'd be you know it's it's uh, more news than anything. So we broke the news. Uh, I know Barry gets his credit and all that stuff, but uh, I do things sometimes um, subliminally. So I'm not an OBJ fan, never been an OBJ fan. 
He's getting old. Okay, so I I get a couple birdies in my ear that this thing is, you know, there's a meeting and they're going to happen. And, and I'm like, what? Are, are you serious? And they're like, listen. And so I'll give you some of the information I got. Okay. Um, you're not bringing him in to be a savior. Not to no. be a number one or number two. Uh, he's going to be a complimentary player. And you already signed Jonu Smith, who's one of the three fastest tight ends in the NFL. So that's really your third option. So he's going to be part of your fourth option with your running backs, catching passes, kind of like that. And then times, if you remember the first year of Waddle, they didn't have any receivers. Remember where Waddle played a lot? Inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So OBJ plays no inside. He yeah, sucks that's... inside. You don't want him inside. You want him outside. So you can attack defenses by putting Hill and OBJ outside. You put Janu and Waddle inside. And then if your offensive line gets injured to the point again last year where you lose guys and you only have time for one option, now you have four fast options, which you only had two that the defense could focus in on last year. Well, you're assuming that Odell is still as fast as he used to no, be. No, no, he's fast, but he's not as fast as he used to be but he's faster Fast than enough, practically I guess. any fourth wide receiver in the NFL yeah, yeah, and yeah. any fourth corner that's going to cover him. Remember, it's not a first corner. It's not a second corner. And it's not even your key safety covering him. The key safety is going to no, worry about Jonu Smith. It's your third or fourth guy. Third or fourth guy covered him. I get it. Okay. So, and then you've, and wait a minute. I'm not done. And then there's <coughs> a Mostert and a Chan coming out of the backfield. So it gives, when Tua drops back, he has, all quick twitch players where he didn't have quick twitch players before and then and then in those moments that you really want to spread it out you bring them out in a third receiver set you put them outside and you put waddle inside because waddle has the experience of running inside and the toughness and two and him have that chemistry so and again here's the other thing because you're not bringing him in to be a savior he understands supposedly that he's not going to be a savior he can't be asking for save your money anymore. No, no, no. I'm sure. So, gonna, it's, so it's like a five, six million dollar deal with a bunch of incentives. I think there's another positive, and I hesitate to say this positive. Oh, and by but, the way, one more positive that I was told. I go to him, well, bro, this guy's a head case. And he goes, what? what you, what's he been doing lately? And you think about it, the last couple of years with the Rams and the Ravens, he's not making love to kicking nets. He's not fighting them. He's not fighting DBs. He's not taking off to Miami beach in jeans on a boat, which that's the good thing. If OBJ signs here, he'll learn how to dress on a boat. <laughs> white shoes. Saying, uh, white uh, shoes. He's getting uh, older. They, they were <laughs> I mean, you, you leave the giants to go South beach and you're all dressed in jeans on a boat. You're, you're dressed like you're in a club and it's like, you, you just took off your shirts. Like guys, you're in South beach. You're on a boat by the, uh, Buy the apparel, bro. Yeah, yeah, first of all, long pants don't run in Florida, but I don't think they get that until they live yeah, here a while. Especially a boat. Yeah, a boat, forget you it. I don't think I'm ever be allowed on a boat. I'm not pants. sure I've worn ever worn long pants on a boat in Florida ever. Or in shoes. They had like, you know, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, they were like they had no attire to be on a boat. <laughs> I, that, that's the one thing that stood out to me. Besides leaving the team, I was like, guys. Yeah, they yeah. inexperience. It's just inexperience. Rookie, you know, <laughs> come on, you know. So he'll learn at least how to dress here to get on a boat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and enjoy himself on the water. So, so when I tell you all of that, that the gamble's not going to be big, then how do you look at it then? Okay, so I'm a fan. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit jaded to say the least. You have to remember something. I'm also still have a little bit, a little place in my heart for the Giants. Okay. So you have them. So I'm even a worse jaded, right. uh, jaded man, but not like, a like a bunch of you, uh, <laughs> uh, six borough people that live here. Yes, yes, we have. Uh, I, I've always called this. I place also, the six borough, I so. also love Joe Namath, you know, the whole nine yards. We, we've heard, brother, you're not the first New Yorker any of us have run into <laughs> saying that. You know, I mean, I, no, it's just like I absolutely automatic. adore the guy. The guy is like, he's my hero and has been since I was 12. And I'm pretty old, but Steve, so, <laughs> Steve Goldstein is the voice of the Panthers, and we know he loves the Rangers. <laughs> yes, yeah. he grew up in he grew up in New York, yeah, in so. Brooklyn. I think it's Brook. I think he's a Brooklyn kid, and he was a Rangers fan, yeah. bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The Garden, so, blah, the blah, garden blah, 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 yeah. So you, but, you can't take somebody's. You're never going to take 
the Phillies and Mike Schmidt out of me. Yeah, yeah, it's it's you know. Although Mike Schmidt, you could take it out of it because he's tough on the fans. No, but the, uh, yeah, uh, but, but I always still, worried about. Mike I always is, got mad about that. He, he, I know he's a first class dick. I, I yeah, know, yeah, I know. I know but, great ball player. But, but he, but that's my favorite Clutch. baseball player of all time. Clutch, you know. But that's. But I grew up See. as I didn't have the Marlins, so I grew up as a Phillies fan with Steve Carlton, Trujillo, and all that. So I, that that was my teams were. By the way, Mister Philly. My teams were the Sixers, the Flyers. Oh, that's my son's, Mister Philly. Oh, okay, right. I right. remember. I'm a, I'm a but, New, I'm a New York fan. I moved to South Jersey. I didn't realize South Jersey wasn't was like Philly. Yeah, that's right. that's that's a so sixth, I, another borough of Philadelphia. Outside of the Eagles, I used to root for the three Philly teams when I was a kid, and the, I didn't have the three sports. And, and uh, my, what do you call it? The, did I ever uh, tell you this story? No. My dad was a trucker, and he had a trucking company out on on Okeechobee Road. And um, this is why we always used to be here at Hialeah Park all the time. He was it's, yeah, Okeechobee Road's a couple miles right, away. Right, he was right off of a hundred, uh, right off of uh, Okeechobee Road in the and the and the Palmetto. Uh, you you know you know that you know where the mall is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was his property. Oh wow, <laughs> wow. Okay, uh, wait, hold on. But it wasn't as densely populated. It was. You no, know, it gets worse. It was his property before the guy that sold it that really made the money. <laughs> oh, man. You wouldn't be here if he sold it to no. the mall people. <laughs> no, I would not be here. You'd be at the, you'd be on some that, island. That was his second property. If you drive by uh, um, the Palmetto and, and Okeechobee, and then you see the Arby's and the McDonald's and all that, and then right next to it, there's a little trucking uh, company. That's his. Wow. That was called AG Trucking. Al Zugari and Gonzalez Trucking. Wow. And then he had so many trucks that that lot was full of trucks. And it oh. was the only lot where you would pull out the trucks. And then the mechanics were all there. He had a mechanic here, but it grew so much that they had to then there. And then eventually. But now the trucking must have brought you to Philadelphia. Yes. So we would go to Philly and Dover, Mass, for auctions. And so we would buy the, the, the truck, well, not we, my dad would buy the truck with a flatbed, right? And then we'd, we'd buy three or four of them and we'd stack them on top oh, of Oh, and each drive other, them down, yeah. Drive them down and then he'd build them up into dump trucks and then he'd ship them to Panama because back in the 70s and early 80s, Panama was washing everybody's money in the <laughs> world. And they were, have you ever been to Panama City? There's Pan a, wait. Panama, Panama in, I'm talking about Panama, Panama. No, 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 no. In Panama, where the canal is and all that. Yeah. They were they, they were laundering money like it was, and they still do. I think. Yeah, because I think they, they haven't stopped that process. Yeah. Well, in Panama, <laughs> at that time, they were building banks in every corner of every block, and they needed construction. So he took advantage of that. Beautiful. And so and and so since I went to Philadelphia so much, I went I went to the vet. Flyers, were you a Flyers fan? Yeah, I was they a were Flyers they fan. were big time then. I know Broadway. Oh, Bullies. Broadway Bullies, man, they were big time. I know I, I, and good. And, and I, I have a six foot poster in my studio of the doc. Of the what? The doc. Oh wow! You're not going to take met Dr. J out of me. That's no, like my met... favorite player of all time. I met him and, too. And, and let me tell years you, years later, but a, he's super classy. A gentleman, a gentleman yeah, of a man. Yeah. I, I met, I met. I met Schmidt and he was a dick. <laughs> I met I met Dr. J. He was awesome. Couldn't have been nicer. And I gave him a casino credit line. Yeah. I gave him like a thirty thousand dollar credit line. Okay. You know, and they like which was like you know peanuts to him. But yeah, of course. And he also had uh, a lot of good business. They had like the Coca Cola bottling yeah, yeah. company yeah, yeah, in, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, in yeah, Philadelphia. No, he, was a, he was a smart business. Yeah, man. he had. Yeah, he was, and he couldn't have been a nicer guy. I met oh, him about four or awesome. five times, and he's. Uh, I met him Funny. at Harris, Harris Atlantic City. And just a classy guy. And so, so you're at Philly. And and were you Eagles, too? Yeah. No. I grew up with the Dolphins, bro. Okay, I was going to say. I'm a hometown guy. Okay, okay. I was going to say. I thought maybe you get No, no, no. Yeah. Don't push it. Don't push it. Yeah, because that, that would have been. I would maybe. I would have to. Die. Don't insult me. No. <laughs> yeah, that would okay. be. Now, now you woof, pushed it. No, woof, no, no, no. That would be rough, man. No, no, no. <laughs> I had the three. No, seriously. I had the three or four because I didn't have a heat. Oh, Iverson. I guess Iverson was playing back. Was no, Iverson? No, yet? no, 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 no. I already had my. I, I already had the heat then at that time. No, no, no. I, I I I got the heat in '88. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah no, I, Iverson was already no, no, no. I was I was I was right in that Barkley era. Oh, right? oh. that's when the switch came. That's okay. when the switch. Bark those Barkley teams were my last teams and all that kind of stuff. 
once I got an 88 and I got my cycling, I'm I'm off and, and they, running and I'm done. I'm screw Philadelphia. So you know what I'm saying? But you can't take the past out of me because Andrew Tony or White Chocolate or uh, Chocolate Thunder, or Daryl Dawkins, all that. Daryl Dawkins. I, I will live with. In fact, our first basketball game here, to before we got the Heat, was the six was the Sixers and the Nets, and Dawkins was now playing for the Nets, and the Doc was playing for the Sixers, and they played at the Knight Center in Miami. Really, we packed it, which is not hard yeah, to but do because it's like this size. But that was our first basketball <laughs> time, game. Too. And wait, it probably had New York and Philadelphia fans because it was probably the winter. It was they it were was, flying down. It, it was it was eighty seven or eighty six. No, but or it, I'm sure they were playing in March or April. Yeah, check it out. Tell, tell me the date. Oh no, of no, that. no, 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 no. They wouldn't be playing nostalgia. March. No, maybe they wouldn't. Maybe they wouldn't have been. It was probably a preseason game. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure it was a preseason game. Yeah, it was Sixers versus Nets at the Miami <laughs> Night Center. Eighties, uh, I would say eighty seven, eighty six. It has to be the year before too, before the expansion. So, 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 you, so, so, yeah. So that, like, for me, was my. You know, so I'm going to get. Then I switched over. So you know, I understand. So a giant connection, yeah. blah blah blah. You know that I, it was my first NFL game. Us older guys, we have to. That has to be part of our lives when we're in a town that's very transient and new with teams, and you come from a city that has the teams for a hundred years. You know, it's different. And, and the first NFL game I ever went to was a New York Giant game. So, you know, that's kind of like a thing. Like, okay, you, you can't – you don't really forget that. And I remember I remember the going to going to Giant games was freezing cold. God. It was, like, horrible. I, I mean, I really did this day. I watched it on TV. I'm like, oh, those poor souls. I'm, and I'm talking about the fans. <laughs> I guess the players, too. Oh, did you see you what know? happened to the Kansas City game with Miami? <laughs> yeah, so X amount of guys uh, brushed by. Yeah, like lots of people. Cutting limbs off and shit. <laughs> I mean, fingers I, I mean and some idiots are out there, with, with, you know, shirtless or whatever. It's like, yo, bro, it's yeah, it's, it's bad. But so my thing is, I think it's has some positive possibilities for the Dolphins. The OJB experiment, potential right. experiment. I also think, um, and I hesitate. People will probably write into your to your uh, show and say that guy's nuts if he thinks that. But there might be no, no, some. No, most people feel like you. <laughs> no, no, seriously. No, no, no. I, I just said the next thing. I'm saying like I, there might be some positive veteran locker room leadership that could be had. I, like I don't I, know from him. I I hesitate with leadership, but he's been around. Yeah. He could help some of the younger guys. I will. I, I, he I, might be a decent teammate in the locker room. The part I couldn't argue when they told me he goes, "What's he been doing lately? Is he doing anything stupid out there, crazy?" No. Well, in the Actually, last five years, not really. Not right? a five, but like last two or three, it's really not. Maybe, you know, I, I don't it's know. Been, he it's might, been a while. It's been a while. Actually, he might be a decent influence, or maybe he got might. humbled. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I, or maybe just trying to say, "Look, I got to pile on as much as I can because another couple, another year or two, this he is made all a over." Killing last year. I know, but it's going to be over soon. He knows it's oh, over. No, no, yeah. it's, it's over now. Yeah. And that's the other thing I want to tell people out there. You guys know Chris Greer. So many of you are so worried about, oh, my God, he's going to pay him a bunch of. You know Chris no, Greer. No, he's going he's gonna... to. Well, what are the three words? What is his? What are his three words? His slogan. Low hanging fruit. That's what he does. Yeah. And he's exceptional at it. And so if he goes after you, he's not really going to roll the red carpet out unless you're like a really top-notch player. Then he'll go well, for Armstead Tyree, or yeah, Tyree, Tyree, Tyree or, yeah. or Jalen Ramsey or whatever. Yeah, he's going to go overboard for Chubb. He's going to go overboard for the those elite guys. That, yeah, he'll do that. Those are but game all the changers. Other guys, right. Those are game changers. Exactly. Nailed it. Yeah, that, that's and, and that's where I don't think they look at him that way. They look at him like a complimentary player. And as long as he sees himself – as a complimentary player also, then we're all good. Listen, I guess when you really sum it up, I guess my response should have been, everybody from New York ends up in Florida when they're ready to retire. Right. He's just pre pre-retired. Right. You know, it, it's like a pre-retirement plan for OJV. You know, like, you know, I was in New York and I visited a couple other cities and now I'm going to retire in South Florida. Yeah. It's sort of like how many... How many people can say that in South Florida? Probably about a million. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, so, I mean, he's just doing what everybody else... Has done. Yes, he's just you know. So that's nothing bad, right? He's doing what I did or plan to do when and, I do and, retire at some and, point. And he did it faster than you did. Yeah, and a lot faster yeah. and a lot more money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we definitely can't compare bank accounts. So, 
So anyhow, that's one bank account I would like to have. Let's talk about your Miami Dolphins. Yes. So, you know, let's talk about free agency in Miami Dolphins. Mm -hmm. But there's a component, you know, we're all talking about, oh, yeah, you know, Jonah Smith so fast, blah, 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 blah. Maybe he is. And but I, I think he's I think he's a B, a B player at this point in time. I understand he's fast, but he could be better. He could be better than B. And there's a couple other good ones. The defensive. Uh, what was the Jordan Brooks? Jordan I love. Brooks. That's an A. Plus. That's, a, that's an A. That's an that, A. That's an upgrade. That's an A. That's an I a. actually think they got better at inside linebacker with Jordan Brooks over over. Um, um, Deshaun? No, no. no it's Baker. Baker. Jerome Baker. Uh, and I think they're better in the secondary. Because oh. I think X was done, dude. And I think Fuller. Well, he was injured player. this year. This year he was... He's been injured the last couple of years. It's, it's but we have been... lost. We have lost a few teams. A few guys. Yeah, of There's course. There's no doubt about no, it. No, I mean, Wil Wilkins part. We don't mm -hmm. know that that is an unknown there. If we're going to be better there, you know, and, now and, we may get a draft pick there. I think the first, second round pick could be a defensive tackle. Oh, would, would, for Christian Wilkins? Yes. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, yeah, that was a big loss. Yeah. That, I mean, but you know, he couldn't afford it, so you got to do it, right? I mean, I, I get it, but I, it's not that you couldn't afford it. They didn't want to afford it. No, but then next year they would be out of money. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You you need to sign. The next wave was more important. Yeah, so I mean, it was uh, and Xavier Howard. You know, another one is Done. expensive. Nobody's expensive too. It's expensive, but you still lose him. You know. It, yeah, it, but I don't think I. I think, Deshaun Elliott. I think not, that was. I, I think that's a that's a a positive by a negative. Uh, I don't know how you. I, I know I'm phrasing it the wrong way, but addition by subtraction. Addition by subtraction <laughs> is exactly the 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 term I wanted to use. It was brother. It was time for X to move on. It was time already. Yeah, I I just it, it's it seems like the. It seems like we did okay. No, I, I and I'd, I'd say okay. I grade it B okay. minus. I'm a B minus. You might be a little okay. higher. All right. That's might fine. be a little higher. I'm hoping That's that pretty... the draft is better than this. I feel better about the draft than this. Oh, okay. You know, I'm looking at the what we lost, what we gained. I mean, I don't know. There's, it's not, there's not, it's not like it's game changing. But then again, was there really anything available that the Dolphins needed that would be game changing that they could afford? You, you know, it's kind of a weird. Right, right. right. It's because kind of you weird. You don't want to ruin the next wave. You want to keep those guys. Clearly, they're trying to save Thank space you. and keep the next wave of guys. Yeah. So it was. It, I think it has a you know B minus B minus event. I don't us. have a problem with a B. Yeah. A B I mean, it's, you know, it's not now. Who do you think? Who do you think was? What do you think about the guys that made the big splash? The teams that made the big splashes, like Atlanta, and I guess Houston, and there's a couple other teams that. What do you think about who you who do you think made the best move in terms of changing their chances of making the playoffs and going maybe one or two in, wins into the playoffs? I have my Houston, opinion. Houston actually did a nice job. I think but Houston, they're, but, they're kind of, but they're so green. I'm not a Kirk Cousins guy, so. I, but you know what's going to happen with Kirk Cousins? He, they're going to win the their division, the AFL. Oh, yeah, they, they're going to win the division. South, right? And they're gonna, they're, they might squeak out a victory, and then they're gonna lose. Maybe that's what they're gonna do. Hey, look, yeah. that's a lot better than the last yeah, three, uh, four oh, years. Yeah, a wild but card. I, okay. I also believe. I also believe. But I also, Houston, I like. I like them more as a complete team. Now it's a lot to ask because they're still young. Yeah, but so, they, they. I don't know. I. I and think, again, their division isn't great either. I think Houston did fantastic. Yeah, no, they did. I, I say Houston and Atlanta did well. They did excellent in terms of improving. Their current team, because I agree. Atlanta, I agree. see, Atlanta had a lot of room to improve. You know, yeah, they, no, they, yeah, they, they, they were I mean, kind of easy to improve. And I also think I don't. I should. Say, I shouldn't say this because I kind of like you know I respect and like Arthur Blank as the, as an owner. But I think he's saying, hey, I want to win this one. You know, and I think he thinks he did enough to now get his team to be to win a division and go deep into it. I think he thinks, hey, I think I can actually win the Super Bowl with these guys. I don't think he can, but I think. Arthur Blank thinks it. Right. You know, I think, and so that's good. I think it's, say, hey, I think they, if the, in, in Atlanta, the Atlanta Falcons fans should be feeling good. Houston was a good team that I think got substantially better. Yes. I think they got, they, they're, and yeah, Young, I don't, I think uh, Young well, is good. Yeah. I think Young is good. You guys uh, are trying to prove themselves. Yeah. Yeah. But you need, you still need some veteran leadership to kind of get you through some of that. But I get, I, I just don't want to put too much pressure on them because they had, a surprise year for people and now they're going to have tape on everybody and so you know this is the year where you find out if you really were something real last year or you surprise people
because now they'll have tape on you and then we'll see if you figure things out. Here's my message to the to your listeners. Fantasy football players should load up on some Atlanta Falcons and Houston and, and Houston players. I'm telling you, I think they're they're both teams are gonna score a lot of points. I really I think that I, Houston, like that. I think Houston's gonna have a, a better defense. I think Atlanta didn't really address the defensive side at the level they need to, but I think both teams are going to be considerably better. And when I go for my fantasy draft this year, I'm going to be looking at way more players on Houston and Atlanta than I did the last three years. That's for sure. Right. Which is so they're going to be more fun to watch too. Which is our team. You know, our yeah. team is a, that's another. Pro- now getting back to the Dolphins, we are really an exciting. The Dolphins are an exciting team to watch. We throw the ball. We throw it deep. You know, we got like guys all over the place, and it's it's kind of fun. I just hope that they can stay some, <laughs> stay healthy this year. But assuming that they stay healthy, I still think that the defense is C. I don't even think it's B minus. I think they're C. And I, it's I, it's still unknown. I gotta I gotta well, wait till I gotta wait. So you till can't I say it's an A or B. <laughs> I know I, I I can't until I see them actually take because. We have a new defensive coordinator, which is so. So again, you know, even though I like what he's all about and how he talks and how he carries himself and where he comes from, he's got and all that decent resume. He's got, he's got all the foundational things that you want in a coach. Okay, where he comes from, how he handles himself, how he carries himself, all that kind of stuff. Now we got to see if he can put it together. You know what I'm saying? Because it's one one thing is being an assistant coach, now being the defensive coordinator. You know, so if he is good. Then you know that that the defense might be better than it was. You know, one of the things I talked about yesterday that I did not like was a lot of the young guys did not get opportunities with Fangio. So he, oh yeah, it was weird. Fangio, I don't know about Fangio. I don't think he wanted us, to be here. Right, and maybe he just knew it was a year. So let me just play Deshaun Elliott and and let me just play any veteran corner, but I'm not going to play you, Cam. You know what I mean? And and so. Uh, and there was another uh, young player that didn't get uh, a lot of playing time under him besides Cam. Uh, who was the other guy that we talked about on defense? But either way, you have some guys that just didn't get in there. And so maybe I'd like to see what Anthony Weaver does and if he starts weaving in with all these different players and starts having patience. Oh, Cater Kohu. Cater Kohu, like, you know, he got like, you know, he had a terrible year. And you just wonder, well, wait a minute, how was he so good last year? And then now this year he's so bad and he had like a terrible. So I'm excited to see what Weaver does with Kohu and then hopefully also with Cam because Cam was looking good in camp. But again, camp is bullshit compared to the regular season. So back. So I, I, we don't know what Weaver is as a teacher. No, well, we'll, we'll time we're will tell. Time will but, tell. But there is the, a the guy. Things could end up becoming better. There's a guy I'm, I'm going to miss. That's not gonna be wearing a dolphin jersey, and my wife's gonna miss him too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, that was a bummer. That guy was a little bit underrated. He was a bit of a bargain. He was a hell of a, you know, a defensive. I I just, I just were, I, you know, when I saw that one, he went to Minnesota, right? I mean, yeah. Which Brian Flores. I guess, I yeah. No, I know, but I mean, how did we let him walk away? Twenty nine years old. And coming off a Liz Frank injury, they don't know yet how he's going to come back. Even though he's a quality dude, Liz Frank, yeah. Liz Frank is a very dangerous injury. That he got that at the end of the seat, right, right yeah. towards the end. Yeah, yeah. and and yeah. so uh, there's a lot of players that don't come back the same with that Liz Frank injury. They never, they never have the same quickness. They can't cut the same. Um, I believe that's what stopped you, Donis Haslam. Once he had that foot injury, I think it was Liz Frank. He was never the same player again. And um, and so this happens to a lot of players. You know? What exactly is the injury? I mean, what it, it's somewhere in the arch. I'm not smart enough for yeah, it. But it, 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 it was a foot injury. I thought it was like you know like they stretch it out. They oh, do it's I mean, serious. Well, I, I know personally. I have some friends that have had foot issues. Right, they, they literally friends when they get an operation on their and and he's, and he's going to be 29 this year. So that's I don't not know that old though. Come on, a linebacker? No, nah, I don't think it is. For for, for pass think, rusher, you're gonna you're gonna want a guy that's. I didn't realize it was that this old, but like, I can tell you. Right, and this is his peak years. Yeah. In other words, you're signing him. This last contract is, is it. His, is this is peak. it. Yeah, yeah, and this so, is it. And so they, I think they felt like we don't want to take the gamble, and they let him go. But it was inexpensive, wasn't it? Wasn't 20 it? million. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it was that expensive. Well, I guess for, for Van Ginkle, that was a good, you know, he makes, he makes a score. And he's from there. 
He's from that area. He's, yeah. So I, I think I think um, I think the Vikings are like 60, 80 miles away from his hometown or some shit like that. Yeah. So he's going home and he well, the, forget going home. He's getting he's going to 20 million. I mean, that's pretty yeah. good, too. You know, no, but I think it, I think the home thing is very yeah, important. Helps. Them. They're, they're both Midwest people. And they kind of like that, they, even though they looked like they were enjoying the hell out of themselves here in, in South Florida and they wanted to be here. But um, hey, man. You know, I got a little game I'm to play. With you. Listen, it hurt me. Yeah, the AVG, that was a, yeah, that was a but tough But I'm just giving you kind of I the think... imp, kind of the stuff that I've picked up from and why uh, these things were done. And I think the Liz Frank and being and going to be 29. No, it's understandable. Okay. I just and I... Wilkins also. Uh, Wilkins is also going to be 29, and he's got more mileage at defensive tackle than any defensive tackle that was available in free agency yeah. because he plays every single. Down, he does not come off the field, so he has a lot of wear and tear. Also, so I got a little game to play here, right before I leave here. So th there's this article. It doesn't matter where the article is, but it's list the the top uh, moves in football that were made, trades and uh, free agencies. If you were to rate them in A, B, or C, okay. I'm just I'm just gonna blurt the name. I'll say it a, a grade. You say a grade. Okay, Chris Jones. Oh, a Come plus. On. Yes. It's the reason why they'll be in the Super Bowl again. Justin Matabuki. Yeah. Got to be an A, right? Yeah. All these are. Now, what about Sneed? Oh, God. If you can get him, that's an but A. That, yeah, but he still hasn't. He's available. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so appar apparently. Uh, um, no, would Matt, you? Matt Verderam, who covers the. He's like a Chiefs insider. And he covers the Chiefs and the NFL. He, th he This guy wants like $22 million. He wants to be paid the top, the best, the, the number one corner in the NFL. I don't think he's worth it. And oh, He's great, but they're, they're, they tagged him. So he's going to get paid the tag if he can't get, you know. If he money. can't get a better deal. But he can't get a better deal. So my point nobody is, is going to trade picks and pay you $22 million. Nobody. Yeah. Uh, unless the team says we're you from a Super Bowl. And I don't know what team out there you say, okay, you get him, you're a Super Bowl winner. Uh, unless it's that, I, you know, it's like, remember when we were a little younger and Dion said, you know what, I'm going to go help the Cowboys win a championship. Yeah. I'm leaving the San Fran Niners. I'm going to go over. And sure enough, they, he, he, he was the difference <laughs> in why they won. And it was like, you know, it's, well, I forgot that, that's why, by the way, for those of you that doubt Dion Sanders, and then you run into an older person and tells you, you don't know what you're talking about. You have not watched that guy's entire career. <laughs> These are the moments that you go, Deion Sanders is unlike anybody I ever watched at FSU, in the NFL, playing baseball and football at the same time, changing the dynamics of an entire NFL team and an entire conference by just moving from one team to another. And so then what he did at Jackson State, nobody's going to be surprised. And what he's going to do at Colorado, nobody's ever going to be surprised. The problem is plenty of people are turned off by being so outgoing out there. You know what I mean? But you can do that if you back it up. Yeah, well, he did back it up. Yeah, and he's now always he backed it up. And it's it's like it's the whole name of thing. Well, I, you took the words it, out of my mouth. It's you, you, can be, you can be cool when you say you're going to win and you're a 19-point underdog. And you, and can, you win. And you can, <laughs> and you can sit on the fucking sideline with a mink, with a fur, with a In, mink. In my house, in my, like, my home office, that's, I have that photograph. It, you know, who does that shit? It's as and good as it gets. And you can only do that shit if you can then go on the court and then just, or the ice or the field or the pitch or whatever, and then follow through. And there are only a few of those people. And so for you youngins out there, if you're going to, you think Deion Sanders is that guy that is not going to, bro, that guy backs up everything he does. And it's been like that his whole life, you know. It's just some guys have. It. So I, I have a, I have a, uh, a Joe Namath sitting on the bench with a uh, mink coat story. Okay? okay, I'm in. I'm in. This is quite amazing. I'm I got in, a better one after. Uh, well, Go it's, ahead. it's a decent. I'll try but to make not, this but quick. But it's not Joe Namath. It's Joe. So here's what it's. I'm in Cipriani's in New York. I'm with my buddies. We're at some big sporting event. I remember Dan Marino was there. Bob Costas, the whole night, and they're having a silent auction. And I'm trying to get that photograph, the photograph with Namath on the sidelines, sitting next to Early Thomas, who I've met, who was my buddy's teammate at Colorado State, right? So there's two people you can see. Joe Namath with a, with a mink coat with a pink tag, pink tag, like a credentials tag, and Early. 
And that's one thing. I'm signing there. And who am I going against? Rudy Giuliani. Oh, God. And Giuliani's put, got his cell phone. And my never cell phone. And, and we're going back and forth. Like 50 bucks up every time, right? And at the same time, I'm trying to get the uh, Giuliani's die is running down. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Okay, at that just... point, he was he was he was he was distinguished. He had a little gray, and so and so now the uh, I, I'm trying to get the the catch the uh, Ty, David uh, Tyree catch and from Manning, and it's a picture autographed by both of them. Right, and I'm competing with Rudy Giuliani. It's Julia, me and Rudy going back, going at it. I'm going. I'm watching. I'm sitting there. I'm running up. I'm signing. Then the ice goes down. I see him walk up. And then there's a guy with him. He's signing Rudy's name, which I thought he kind of cheated on me yeah, there. What, what Rudy? <laughs> yeah, you know, I uh, was, yeah, yeah. was kind of weird, right? Rudy cheating, lying? No. <laughs> kind of hurt me there. No, I like the guy. I like the guy, but he kind of hurt me out there. So now it, boom, I, I, I just lose track of what's going on. And they call it end to the silent auction. I win the David Tyree Manning p- picture. I don't win the uh, oh, thing. name. All right. So I said, at least I beat Rudy for the, for the Manning it, catch right so i go to pay my money whatever hell it was it was a donation it was pretty i paid way too much for the photograph right and i said can i just have one thing can i have the bid sheet because i wanted to have i wanted to be able to show everybody that i that i beat at and they would not give it to me because oh, it had a name. cell number on yeah. it oh had the name. cell phone number yeah, on i it. guess a little personal so yeah, yeah yeah or a cell phone number i don't know it was his but yeah. the the good thing of that story was i did not get the name of thing my wife the nice the beautiful woman that she is that Christmas, she surprised me with Christmas. And she went online. She bought the Joe Namath with the mink coat, with the pink credentials, with Early Thomas. Nice. It's sitting in my home right now. I go. have a little collection room. I have a little memorabilia room. Of course. And it's one of my favorites. Right. Bro, that's one of the most iconic pictures in the it history was, of the game. It's like it top, would have been better. Top five. It would have been better to beat Rudy Giuliani out when you had his bid that, sheet. That, with that it. picture <laughs> goes with Muhammad Ali over over Frazier. You know the the thrilling Manila picture yeah, that is was... like that. That's that. That's one of those pictures, bro. That's iconic. One of those right. The most iconic pictures out there ever. I'll give you another first story. So a player who was not so right in his mind shows up to practice for the Bears. And he walks out onto the field, and he starts to line up to play. And he's got his uniform on, but he's also wearing a mink coat above the uniform. Uh, McMahon? No, Curtis Enos. Curtis Enos? The running back from Penn State. <laughs> from Penn State? Yeah, Curtis <laughs> Enos. I think he went to Penn State, if I'm correct. I want to say Curtis I didn't think Enos. there was any cool guys that went from Penn State. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good guys, but not cool, cool guys. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Maybe Franco was pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, he's a good guy. Good guy. Good guy. Good guy. Good guy. Uh, uh, oh, from New Jersey. My man. Really? Franco Harris. I'm sorry. He's from New Jersey. I just wanted to let you no, know. But, but, but so Curtis <laughs> Enos, like he shows up to practice and he's got a mink coat on and he's trying to practice with a mink coat. And then they got to try to convince him to just get him off the field. Forget about just taking off the coat. There's something wrong with this guy. You know what I mean? So, well, th- listen. Uh, maybe so, he thought he could be Joe Namath for a moment. Yeah, well. well <laughs> oh, that would have been, that, that <laughs> no, no, no. be funny. So back to the thing. So Kirk Cousins, good A, B, or C. What do you think? I. Okay, you're Atlanta. You just had. Yeah, Desmond Ryder. Ryder, 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 Ritter, 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 Ritter. 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 Uh, but um, yeah, no, this is like a B, I guess, because at least you have a, a, a decent quarterback. Yeah, he's I a think decent quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I think I think he's, he's a, a quarterback. I think he's not a B bad plus. quarterback. I'll give it a B plus. I'll give it a B plus because I mean, he's like, no, I think he, I think that he might do okay, but it's not good. He's not going to get to the big game, is and he's he, not going to win the big game. He is I think off, he's going to do everything else. But he's older and coming off an injury. Uh, I think he's going to be okay with that. I really do. I think he I think he recovers from that. And and they've done a good job putting. They got four, four or five receivers around. Yeah. They did a good job saying, "Hey, no, I don't think. I think it cost them. It cost them, I guess, time. Uh, well, picks and money, because I still think that their problem is going to be defense. I think they're going to be in a. You know, Atlanta is not in the. They're going to be a not fun clear or anything, but you know, they'll <laughs> they'll be a little better than they were last year. No, they're going to win the AFC South. They're going to win yeah. the AFC South. Right? Well, I don't know. Ba- Wait a minute. Isn't isn't um, Baker Mayfield and the boys there? It, come on, ba- Baker's not. He had a good year last year. I dude. think he had. He, I think he had a surprise year. I was happy for him because he came out. He sort of had a little bit of a comeback. I don't know. I wouldn't count Baker out right now. 
Yeah. I wouldn't count. They brought they brought uh they brought his receiver back, Evans. Oh, Evans is the real deal. Yeah, uh, Evans is the real well, deal. Obviously. So what do you brought... think about that pick? That that was number eight, as, as you know, list. No, uh, that's an A A but, plus. But Tampa, you have to do that. That's that's, that's your that's one of your legendary that's your players. Team. That's your yeah. team. Like no, but that, that guy's not done yet. You know what I mean? Although I saw him drop a little too many balls last year, but um, but yeah, you have to you have to bring that guy back. And Baker played well last year. Maybe Baker found his way, man. Maybe 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 Baker has the right coach and the right system. Uh, you know, so he can get comfortable and play, you know, the way he needs to play. It, it's all about that. Sometimes it's it's about finding the right system and the right coach and all that kind be of great. stuff. I think gonna, what about Saquon, A, B, or C? Yeah, it's a B, man, easily. He's a good player, man. But there's many people who think it's an A. Yeah, that's fine. It, the only obvious, the, yeah, yeah, I mean, I just he right, also gets hurt I often. Can't, I can't give you an A because... You don't. They, you they, don't like Philadelphia. No, no, no. Because it's uh, the, the you're not really going to carry the team because running backs really, unless you're in Baltimore where you're kind of limited with the passer, so you have to be run oriented. And so yeah, go get Derrick Henry and Lamar, That's and you're going to run, 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 that run. That should run. be an A. Yeah, but you still have. He, to, he's old, but he's old. I, no, no, he's fine. He's great. But my problem with that is the same thing that's going to happen in to happen in Tennessee. If the quarterback can't make plays with his arm. It don't matter, bro. They'll all stack the box and they'll stop both of you eventually because the better defenses end up in the playoffs and you're not going to get by. Last year they got by because they played a young team in that first week. So they played yeah. a Houston team that was green and they could muscle them. And they just got I mean, there was that was a right. That wasn't like they blew them completely out of everything. What about so Derrick Henry? The problem with Derrick Henry is you talk about having mileage. Oh, but he's My still, man's got. He's still, I know he's a beast. He's a beast. He's still playing. I great. think he's got a, two good years left in him. But easy. But he has easy. a lot of mileage on him. But he's a freak. I, I know. You know, he LeBron. Is. LeBron has. LeBron has more mileage, and he's still playing. You know, I I, I get still it. Still playing. I get the, it. He's the Jim Brown. Yeah. He's the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. He's that longevity stud. He's just one of those freaks. Well, the good. You know what yeah. I'm saying. So, so what do Walter you think? Walter Payton, you know, he's he's that dude. Derrick so, Henry is one of those special ra dudes. Wrapping up the whole Dolphins thing. At this point in time, you don't know what the draft's going to bring. Let's right. say the draft is average, right? You know, there's a couple good ones, two good ones. What do you think the Dolphins are compared to they were last year? What do you think's going to happen? Not yet. what you want. I can't. I I, I can't. I, I can't give you an intelligent opinion until I actually see the draft and then. See what they put together during during you know preseason and all that. See if that's kind of falling in place, and then I'll feel better about it. Because I have I don't know anything about Weaver. I, I personally I, I, I can only go on hope that I love what I see, but it still has to translate. And then I, and then McDaniel's another one that I need him to grow. Oh my God, I need him to grow big. I I think personally, I think it's gonna be one notch below. We'll see. And as a fan, it hurts me to say that. I'm, I'm hoping it's that. it's one, two, three, five, five steps steps ahead. But I think it's gonna be one step behind. So let me ask you something, because this is what I ask everybody that says that. So out of the last two years, their biggest problem was that they were completely injured at the end of the year. So if they're healthy, aren't they better than they were last year? Yeah, okay. No matter even with or without Wilkins, okay, with or without Rob Hunt, if everyone else is healthy. How in the hell are you not better than you okay. were last year and the year before? Here's my opinion on it. I think there's something wrong in the organization of why they're getting hurt. Nah, that's just I bad think luck. something's weird. Nah, I think why luck. are they getting so why it's just bad luck. It's just a, it wasn't like that three, five, seven, ten, twelve years ago. It wasn't it, it's either you failed because you weren't good enough. You had Joe Philbin or Ryan Tannehill well, uh, or yeah, Dave yeah, Wanstead yeah. or whatever. It wasn't really, the last. No, two you years, missed the worst coach to mention. You missed the Philbin, worst. Philbin, whatever. No, no, the guy uh, from oh, oh, Cam the, Cameron. No, no, the guy. The worst oh, one Cam was Cameron. one that went. One that went the, no, one no, fifteen. Cam the Cameron. one that went to the Jets. The worst coach ever. I think that Adam Gase, Gase oh, yeah, was yeah. the worst well, NFL no, but, but, coach but, but, I've ever observed in my life. I know, but he won ten games. I mean. <laughs> I get I, it. I, I can't. I think he's won in one game. He was here one year. You know what I'm saying? No, no. It came. No, Adam, I it. still think Adam Gase was just the worst coach I ever saw. But I, I think how in the world are you not? This is what I don't understand from Dolphin fans. You are completely injured last year. Your entire offensive line was out. Your two pass rushers. Your 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 X was playing on one leg. Now you've got a better corner already than X. 
you've got a better linebacker than you already have in Baker. If if just and I know it's asking a lot because football is a brutal sport, but if you're just healthy, you're way better than you were last year. That does, and that's but that the doesn't part improve. That people don't understand. Yeah, it's I, I don't know. I think it's uh I think look, every team gets injuries, right? So they're gonna no, get not some that many. Not okay, that many. Your whole talk, offensive line I'm cannot be about out. next year. Their, their line was out and Eichenberg was injured. He was playing on one leg, filling in for <laughs> no, Connor Williams. That. What I'm saying is they're going to get a couple. They're going to get their, their share of injuries. And I think they're going to be one step behind. Okay, a share is because, fine. I think it's because of defense. I think it's because of defense. I'm sure they'll get a share because that's everybody. Yeah, that's the whole – that's the but nature it, of the game. But it cannot be that you have just been absolutely – and you, then you're done. Wait, time out. If if they're riddled with injuries, then my theory of something's wrong with the organization may have some merit. If okay. They're, uh, if, if they're if they go through another if year, if it's a third year, I'll give you that. Okay. If they're not riddled and they have an average injuries, I still think they, their defense is going to be the thing that's their thorn in the side. It's first of all, there's no continuity. We don't even know who the, what the guy's going to do. So you your main pass rushers last year, okay? If you get them back by the end of the year. Let's say you're healthy for, for the playoffs. last year. Yeah, you have Chubbs and Phillip, and you added Shaq Barrett as your third pass rusher. Wouldn't you be better? Yeah, but we, much better, better? En enough to win enough to win that game the to, to win the second playoff game. I don't know. Yeah, if you have your if you have nobody that can get to the quarterback and you're playing with three linebackers that are 47 years old each. <laughs> well, those guys, that, we that point, guys that at last, that point we were done. Okay, that, that, we were that done. was our playoff game. I know we, we that signed was... three linebackers off the street to play that game. I know. How in the hell are we not better next year if we're healthy? Think about that. I that's the part that I think all doll fans, because you're so beaten down, because you've been <laughs> so tortured, you don't really think clearly, and you don't remember that your your roster was just in shambles the last two years. So if you just happen to have luck. On the injury side, should be better. You should, should be. be better. We should be now. Should be better. You know, there's a lot of teams that have that. What you just said. I mean, and, not and that, that many. Not that. Not so your many. Left no, no, tackle, not, your left guard, not, not, your not center, the injuries, not your the right injury. guard. No, no, not the right the tackle part. is the only one playing. Right. The right tackle was the only one playing. Jackson. No, I'm not saying the injury part. I'm saying the fans are so fed up. The yeah. New York, the New York Jet fans better be fed up. So are Detroit fans, and now it's getting better. No, for them, no, the Detroit I mean? is getting better. The well, New York better. Jets, the oh, New York Jets. It. Come on, give me a break. No, it's no, been ten a lot years. Of, there's a lot it's of been long ten suffering. years. They, they, Browns they, fans. Yeah, the Browns fans have been like, yeah, they, but, they even signed the rapist, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. I mean, they, not only do they beat you down, then they sign a criminal <laughs> to be a quarterback for you, and he's I mean, and he gets injured, and he's terrible. <laughs> He's terrible well, he's not and good he and he gets injured. Yeah, right. I mean, in that order. That. So, yeah. so it's even more torture for Browns fans. I don't know. I you think I, I hope it's better. I hope I. I, you I, know. I just would. I, I just tell everybody, pump your brakes. Yeah, we gotta let, be careful. Let, let's let's don't overreact because you're you're not really thinking clearly. Don't get too crazy about the team either. Yeah. But let's. How about let's wait for it to develop a little bit. Let's just see how it comes together because there's a lot of things that are unanswered. Did you know Kendall Lamb was going to play as well as he did last year? Did I know what? That Kendall Lamb would play as well as he did last year. No, not even a little bit, you know. So, so how do you know? I mean, how do you know the guy they added from Philly comes here and becomes like a, a hell of a player or something? I have no idea. Uh, Isaiah Wynn. Yeah, was he, in, uh, I'm was not. With, I'm was not. With, well, wait, hold on a second. I but he was think... with the Patriots for, for a few years. His first I have few years. Dante Scarnecchia is known as maybe one of the three greatest offensive line coaches. He couldn't get him to play the seven games that he played here. Yeah. I'm, so I'm just saying these are things that happen that you just never know how it's going to translate from one team to another because talent goes from one place to another. Chubb. Chubb didn't look good when you traded for him. No, no. Last right away. Year, and then last year. Now he settled down. He was a monster. He had like five forced fumbles or something stupid, a bunch of sacks. He was on his way to finishing up a hell of a year. And then, you know, you have that fart at the end and the poor guy, you know, blows out his, what was it? He was the Achilles one, right? No, he was the knee guy. He's the knee guy. Phillips had the the, the Achilles. And, so, and you know, Phillips, getting Phillips back is going to be critical. I mean, that's, yeah. and, and like, he should, and like and I he told should. you with Kohu, 
this guy's more of an aggressive coach and will use the physicality of Kohu. And maybe uh, Fangio wasn't really a fan of that. And so now you're going to see Weaver maybe mix things up and maybe you'll see more out of Kohu than you did last year because he's in a scheme that fits him a lot better. It well, allows him to attack because Kohu is a physical player. The read and react stuff, I don't think that's good for him. Or he wasn't really ready for it yet. Yeah, last year he 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 disappointed no, he, he disappointed terrible. us terrible. big time. But terrible. look, the good thing is that it's gonna be it's a new year. We'll see what happens. I think it's I'm hoping that I'm grossly wrong. I think it's gonna be one notch below, but it's all we'll see what happens. And we'll know. We'll know in the first six first six, eight weeks. For sure. You'll know it. For you'll sure. figure it, you know, you'll have figured this out and sure. And uh, anyhow, back to Hialeah Park. Yes. Don't you? You mentioned the car, the yes. M Mustang Mach E. And we I got think... the no regret first bet there. Remember, if you do have an account already with Hard Rock, use a different email or cell number. Use that QR code, or if you're listening on the podcast, go to HialeahParkCasino.com and then sign up through the Hialeah Park site so you can get the no regret first bet one hundred dollars. And you got I... a, you got a Panther game tonight. You got a Heat game tomorrow night. So. There you go. And the NCAA tournament. I got to tell you, you know, I, I, I will just end end it with this. So I was never, I never really truly understood what the young guys do. My son and all his buddies, they bet the live bets. You know, I will tell you, I understand they're better too. We talked about the odds and figuring out the, value, the, 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 the whole complexion of the game, right? Your value. But really fun. Like really fun. You're, you're watching... You're watching the game. You're watching the odds change right on your phone, like every couple of minutes. It's it adds a dim, a really fun dimension to the game. Yeah, and and I can tell you that it was. Uh, I was not a believer until I did it. You know, and I'm not. I'm not. And I, lo I love when the Heat fall behind and then they give them a bunch of points. And I'm like, I, okay, because I know these bastards. They do it are with football. They do it with football. They do it basketball. Oh, basketball. It's actually better. It's actually, be yeah, yeah, it's actually and, better. And, in basketball. And, and knowing the Heat, you know they're gonna. Fight back and either win the game or, or barely get lose close. It. Get so I I love watching heat games and then the live line because you get to the point where you're giving me too many points. I'm like yo yo, let me take it, let me take it, let but me take it. You have to do it in segments. Like they give you like let's say the it's a three point game or something. Then all of a sudden you're getting seven. You're like oh Boom. shit, so you bang into it. Then next thing you know you're getting nine. And oh you double God. it up. So you got to go more, right? You have to almost go more. Oh, and then, I double it up. Yeah, and it's like uh, what it's I do. If I have conviction, fun. once I have conviction on it. That I'm convinced that I I am gonna win, and I think, oh no, they'll come back out within the points or whatever. I'll take it, bro. I'll take the value. I'll take the value. Yeah, it was every single it, time. It, it's it's something that I didn't realize how fun it can be, and it's it's the 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 their old school sports bet of making the bet before the game oh, and that, seeing that, who wins. It's not smart. Like, well, it's, it's not forget, smart. Not, it's not even fun though, because it's not exciting. You know, you, you the, have you, to wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like. But it's but it really, if you're looking for value, which is what we all want to do in, in a casino, yeah, as you know, um, it, that's the, if you really want to look like you know when you walk in a casino, craps is like the the best odds. Well, ba uh, Baccarat's not bad. Well, Baccarat's yeah, pretty Baccarat, good too. Yeah. See the no uh, those Baccarat tables. No, uh, I no, I think the, I think craps is a, see to play craps properly, you got to have a, a, a sizable bankroll. One of the problems with craps players are they, they go up at 40 they're, bucks. Uh, they're under bankrolled. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they can't they, spread it out. You can't. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, That's it, and it happens with a lot of games, a lot of gambling, yeah. you know, a lot of. But, but if you know how to play it, the odds are good in craps. Craps. You know what I mean? Craps is so great. That's kind of the way you work things when you when you gamble. You got to try to find the value in it. And in lot and in gambling, sports gambling, live gambling is. Yeah. So it's the value it's bet. The, it's the, it's the it value is the value bet. bet. The, the only time the other way, the traditional way. The last two weeks of the NFL season. Oh, wait a minute. You want to give Kansas City points? Uh, twice. No problem. I'm taking it. Yeah, I'm that taking was it. Wild. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. And I made uh, a bunch of money. I in still those don't last understand how the lines were the, what they were. Those I last don't two. either. I, I don't but know what the happened. algorithm said that to do it. That's <laughs> what they did. And I said, bring it on. Bring it. Have you watched that defense all year? Bring it. And they were peaking. And they were peaking. And blah 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 they blah. They carried them, bro. It wasn't Mahomes. It was Chris Jones and that defense that carried that yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, that the, the Mahomes and the boys did enough to win, but they have no shot at winning that Super Bowl without Chris Jones. Zero, so, zero. So and, uh, and the corners. Talking about Kansas Him City. And the talking about Kansas City. I might as well just bring it up because it's what everybody is sick of hearing. But 
So have you been to a Taylor Swift concert recently? <laughs> no, no, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Because it's, ru- it's almost she's performing ruined. here in the parking lot. Yeah, I, wherever. She's like to perform it. Oh, by the way, I, this just to to leave on a, to annoy Big O a little here. You know, she spent three summers in New Jersey at the Jersey Shore. <laughs> Stone Harbor, Stone Harbor specifically. <laughs> New Jersey is just everywhere. Yes. I just want you to know that. Yes. You even you spent time in New Jersey. Actually, I, yes. I mean, in fact, you're an example of it. <laughs> yesterday, I was affected by New Jersey. I ran in. I ran to ran into Bruce Springsteen. I had never seen this video before, and he he was singing uh, the Commodores' "Night Shift." Really? <laughs> How did it sound? <laughs> Fucking. Awesome. Really? Well, he's the boss. I mean, he's the boss. Let's go, bro. I mean, this is one of the greatest American treasures in the history of mankind. I've seen him a couple uh, times. And he's great. Well, he's he's more than great, bro. He is so legendary. See, I think you're a Springsteen legendary. fan because of those I'm years a, spending a, in New Jersey. No, I'm just a Springsteen fan because he, he's one of the greatest lyricists in the world. He's just an, an amazing oh. musician. He plays every instrument in mankind. He can write every song of everything he's hit he's written so many hits for himself for others you know the pointer sisters fire that's his song you know it, it just uh, uh because the night you know of uh, patty oh, look, for me it's uh, uh, it's bruce's born to run it's high school it's but all I run it, yards, and, you know? and, and because the algorithm knows that i like bruce it showed up and i'm looking at that shit i'm going night shift commodores and he's got like this big old band behind wow. him you got if you can I'll, go I'll, YouTube I'll go, it. Yeah, you if you're it. a Bruce fan and you never saw that video, Bruce Springsteen Night Shift, which is the one hit the Commodores had post uh, uh Lionel Richie. When Lionel Richie left, they went roof. <laughs> but that was the one hit that they had. That was the one th- and it's a great song. It's a great song by the Commodores. So but you got to hear Bruce do it, bro. Bruce like there was another part of Bruce that was pretty cool too, and he and he's passed. Clarence Clemens. Oh yeah, I, I saw I, I saw Clarence in in the Orange Bowl. So I he, hired him in t- t- Trump Plaza. We had him in a show. He was performing by himself. He did a little. He yeah. do some. Uh, he had g- a hit. G- gigs. He, well, had, he had some he gigs had, on his own. You know, you he know. had a he had a hit back in the day. I forgot with uh with um he uh, was it Phil Collins? Was it Philip Bailey? Was it? He had a hit with somebody. It was kind of a duet type of thing no, back, back in the day. But so with him, you know, he's you know, he's not at the mega level like Bruce. But so he, it's an hour from Asbury Park to Atlantic City. He drives down. He plays a nice little show and a, like an hour and a half meet and greet with our customers. Yeah. I mean, kind of as cool as you can get. You know, it's like and then when I heard, you know, he's but, a legend, bro. Yeah, he was. For those he, of us that follow it, he's a just, legend to us. Just a just a beautiful person too. Yeah, yeah, a beautiful yeah. person couldn't have been nicer. And we booked him twice because he was like, he, Dude, we got to get him back. It's Paul Simon. Mm, I don't know. Can I don't you know. Can, yeah, can you look it up? Clarence Clemens' uh, hit song or something. Clarence Clemens. It was six hundred seat theater too. Yeah. Kind of nice. Yeah. Really nice. I, I only got to see him uh, once, and that was the Born to Run tour. Because when I've seen Bruce after that, it was after Clarence had passed. Oh, but at least I got to see the 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 E Street Band in its in its heyday and its. Peak. Oh, I've seen you know in growing up in New Jersey, you see Springsteen like you know yeah no of course about, that, about sure. ten times. But there was one time that Springsteen played an acoustical concert, a little bit disappointing. Oh well, it, yeah. It all depends if yeah. He was by himself. Yeah, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a same. show. It was right there in Asbury Park on, in the convention center on the boardwalk. I bet you, you know, made a, an arm and a leg. N- no. Oh, you got in back then. Nah. Oh, back then. Oh, okay. oh Jackson Brown, maybe Jackson Brown. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jackson Brown. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That would make yeah, sense. What's the name of the song? You're a friend of mine. You're a yeah, friend yeah. of mine. That's it. That's it. That's the song. That's that, the song. Clarence that's, was the best. I yeah, mean, he yeah. Was that's when he had. That's when he had the hit song. It's all good. But anyhow. Oh, it's All time right. to go. Yeah. I think it's time to go. Yeah. I drove today. I walk and everything. No, no, there's no no cart. Looking no sharp. Cart, no cane. Looking sharp. No cane I, is I good. Came in, I came in with a cane last week, and now this week I walked in. Losing I, weight. Losing yeah, weight. Lost over 30 pounds. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I, I, can, I, I, I started a diet on a bed. So if anybody tells you and you tell yourself that you can't diet, okay, I busted my foot up 
and I was on a bed for six weeks, barely moving that my wife had to push me around and I started a diet from the bed. Okay. So if I can, if, if my lazy ass can do it, anyone it, in the world can do it. I don't know if I could do it. Anyone can do it. I, enjoy, I, can do I it, enjoy food too much. I, if I can do it, I anybody enjoy. can do it. Anyhow. I lack more. I lack, I lack discipline more than all of you combined. So uh, uh, if I can do it, you guys, when can it do comes it. to food, I might yeah, be the, I I'm might bad. be a, a hall of famer lacking, lacking discipline. <laughs> uh, Anyhow, let's see. Uh, Steve, the boys from Ridge road in NA send their best says George Albanese. Uh, he's a good man. A friend of Tony's friend of Tony's. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, George, you're a friend of Tony's apparently. <laughs> yes. Tony's my best friend. All right. <laughs> is, is Tony out in the bada bing too also? Uh, or is it, well, Tony sounds like a bada bing. Everybody in New Jersey has a guy, a friend named Tony. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> That's a, it's sort of a thing, you know, now thing. Tony happens to be my best friend. Right. And we, we say like he's really Anthony, but you call him Tony. No, his mother called him Anthony. Oh, okay. There his mother called Only him Anthony. His mother calls Only him Anthony. Called him. I didn't call him. I never called uh, him Anthony all my life. Yeah, no, <laughs> I know where every one of his skeletons hey, are. Tony. He he knows where my skeletons are. And hey, we're Tony. like, as a matter of fact, Does he I'm eat going pizzas on top of each other. <laughs> no, oh. no, no. I'm that's going I mean, to all... breakfast with Tony tomorrow morning. Okay. That's that's a friend. I've known him since first grade. Okay. Since first grade. Him and his brother. Uh, it just he, Tony and I are having breakfast tomorrow, but Tony from New Jersey. That's I'm sure that's the, that's not he hangs with those the guys, the guys there, the guys. <laughs> You're the best. All right, man. Take care, right, my brother. Appreciate you as always. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. All righty. All right, man. Bye bye. Uh, let's take a quick break. Give me two minutes. Back with more right here on the Big O Radio Show. Let's see. Wait a minute. Fire. For over 16 years, EJDConstruction.com has provided South Florida residents quality craftsmanship, accurate project management, and exceptional service. That's why EJDConstruction.com is an A-rated member of Angie's List and the Better Business Bureau. When you're looking for the right custom home builder for additions or home remodeling, please call my friend Eric at 305-433-4843. That's 305-433-4843 for ejdconstruction.com Wealth and Rayom has more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes. They're committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. Call them for a free consultation. 954-966-4646 At Wealth and Rayom, they don't get paid unless you win. Property damage claims to your home, business, or condo as a result of a hurricane. Welton Rayom can help. Water, mold, fire, smoke damage, Welton Rayom can help. Call 954-966-4646. Oh, great. You have a doorbell camera. Now you have a front row seat to your house getting robbed. They're breaking into my house! Ooh, there goes the TV. I'm sure it'll turn up at the pawn shop. No, not the TV! Just because you can see them, that doesn't mean you can stop them. With slogans, you get 24-hour monitoring, a free home security system, and professional installation. Plus, free doorbell camera, one that'll actually work for you. Get out of my house! Get out of the house! Call 1-800-ALARM-ME. When presenting an award to an employee, athlete, executive, or fantasy GM, make sure you call Orvieto's Awards and more. For 35 years, these custom award specialists have been providing plaques, trophies, custom framing, while providing state-of-the-art laser and computerized engraving, UV printing, and glass crystal etching. They do all their engraving and printing in-house for quality control. Call Charles at 305-949-8098 or visit them at orvietosawards.com. Vieto's Awards and more, where recognition is rewarding. Welcome, Welcome to Canesware. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop.
There is no need to drive around South Florida wasting valuable time looking for a new or certified pre-owned Acura. Go to the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States. Craig Zins Acura of Pembroke Pines. Purchase with pace and space in a dealership tailored to your needs. From home buying to providing that personal touch. Contact the 2020 Satisfaction Award winner Craig Zins Acura of Pembroke Pines. 888-776-5123. That's 888-776-5123. Or visit them at 15601 Pines Boulevard in Pembroke Pines. statements or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, media group, Inc., ownership, management, sponsors, or website. When it comes to South Florida sports teams, very few in the media have witnessed, lived, and covered it like the Big O. Let's start the program dedicated to your favorite South Florida teams with a passion that's unmatched. The Big O Radio Show is on. Here's the Big O. We are back here at Hialeah Park. Yes, sir. Hialeah Park. Hey, don't forget Welton Rayom, a proud sponsor of our program. We love Jeff Welt, Daniel Rayom. They know how to get it done. 954-966-4646. Bankruptcy. Homeowner property damage, condo damage, criminal defense, business owner claims, commercial litigation, personal injury. They're moving to these new offices there in Hollywood. And listen, we've had listeners in Orlando call them, down in the Keys, up uh, up in Central Florida, like on the west, on the East Coast, actually, away from Orlando. Like we've had customers, uh, listeners of ours, not just in Dave Broward and Palm Beach counties, but all over, reach out to Welton Realm. You can do it too. Listen, the consultation is completely free. Some of you have called to find out if you have a case or not. Some of you do. Some of you don't. And then that's how they can help you. And it's free. You know, they, they lend an ear. Ask for Jeff Welt. 954-966-4646. That's 954-966-4646 for Welt and Rayom. Um, I got to do something for a second time today, Sean. Because I screwed up yesterday. And that this young man deserves a little love. Uh, and so we like finding an MVP of the night. And uh, let me tell you about an MVP two nights ago. And we're talking, of course, about our Cutter's Edge Pro MVP of the night. Who's last night's MVP? For your complete landscape solutions anywhere in South Florida, there's only one MVP. CuttersEdgePro.com. Here's our CuttersEdgePro.com MVP of the night. To Trey Dooms, uh, two nights ago, he led Nova Southeastern University with a terrific performance, 19 points, six rebounds, two block shots, the 6'4 senior, fifth-year senior, by the way, won the state title with uh, university school, which is obviously a – a uh, an affiliate of Nova Southeastern. So it's pretty cool to see him go from there to Nova Southeastern and have the kind of success. And two nights ago against Florida Southern College, he came up with a big game. He's had a hell of a season. MJ Oraldi, Shane Hunter, some of these other guys that play really well for Nova. But uh, Trey Dooms, man, uh, South Florida kid. I got to give him some love as our Cutter's Edge Pro MVP of the night. The MVP of the night is brought to you by CuttersEdgePro.com. Servicing HOAs, condominiums, townhomes, commercial properties, corporate parks, and malls throughout South Florida. CuttersEdgePro.com. Providing South Florida MVP performance every day of the year. All right. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, Let's get to, uh, how about some birthdays today? On the 21st of March. Let's do that before we get to your questions and comments. Uh, Ronaldinho. He is 44 years old. 
Um, let's see. Gary Oldman, movie actor, is 66. Antoine Griezmann, soccer player, 33. Scott Eastwood, actor, 38. Matthew Broderick is 62. Artin Senna, race car driver, rest in peace, born in 1960. We lost him in 94. Adrian Peterson today is 39. Johann Sebastian Bach, the composer Bach, born in 1685, lost him in 1750. Rosie O'Donnell is 62 years old today. Uh, let's see. Charlie Clips, rapper, 37. I have no idea who he is. But I'll mention it. What the hell? He's probably some local rapper from somewhere. Uh, let's see. Any other famous names? DJ Premier. He is 58 years old. Now, that's real talent there. All right, so those are your birthdays. Let's go with music history today. Uh, today, 1994, Bruce Springsteen won the Academy Award for the Best Original Song for Streets of Philadelphia, his contribution to the film, Philadelphia. In 2005, MTV aired the final episode of The Osbournes on it, the dysfunctional metal family got paid a visit from Dr. Phil. In 83 on this date, Pink Floyd released her final cut, the final cut, the last album recorded with Roger Waters. Good album, by the way. I have it. In 2009, U2 went to number one on the album charts with their 12th studio album, No Line on the Horizon. Great album. Great album. Uh, in 1970... The Faces, with new singer Rod Stewart, released her debut album, First Step. In 1981, Ario Speedwagon's Keep On Loving You was the number one song on the charts. And that's what happened today in Musica history. By the way, if you want to play the Powerball, Saturday's Powerball jackpot will now be worth an estimated $750 million dollars after zero players matched all six numbers during the $687 million drawing on Wednesday, 13, 22, 27, 54, and 66. That's the one number I always play. Can it come out again this Saturday? I guess I'm going to have to play one without 66 and one with 66 because, you know, the day I don't play it with 66, it comes out. But then again, that would be the only number I would get with my luck, you know. I already, I already, my luck played out by meeting my wife. I think that's kind of where it ended, unfortunately. Um, no more luck, no more luck for you. It's like no soup for you, no luck for you. Kind of like the Dolphins the last two years with all the injuries. No luck for you. Did you see what's going on with Erica Badu and Beyonce? Oh, this is not good for Erica Badu. No, no, no. Erica Badu, she threw some copycat shade at Beyonce for uh, wearing her hair in uh, braids. And then her longtime publicist, Yvette Noel Shure, entered into the chat to respond to Erica Badu and wasted no time posting full-blown scrapbook of Bay wearing braided hairstyles throughout her entire career, even when she was in Destiny's Child. And she, like, throws one of Destiny's Child. She's there with her hair braided. But women are... You, Men have to understand one thing, okay? We might be fortunate that, you know, the Lord blessed us, that we're stronger and faster and all that kind of crap. We are not as competitive as women. They compete about everything, bro. Looks, careers, men, lifestyle, whatever. They compete in everything. Everything. And so now Badu... And by the way, I'd rather listen to Erica Badu's music over Bay every day of the week and three times on Sundays, okay? I think Erica Badu is awesome, but you pissed off the beehive, bro. That's not smart, man. That's just not smart. Uh, more entertainment stuff. Travis Kelsey. He's in talks. Did you hear about this? This guy's making it, yeah. Uh, if you're smarter than a fifth grader. Yeah, Travis Kelsey's in talks to host Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, The Reboot. 
Okay, Kelsey is in discussions to host a celebrity-focused reboot of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader on Amazon Prime Video, according to Brian Steinberg of Variety. The new version of the show would include celebrity guests instead of children. However, there are some questions, according to people familiar with the discussions, about how much of a commitment Kelsey could make to the venture if he continues playing football. Brother, he is creating his life post-football. He's not stupid. And he can film this stuff... See, here's where they get crazy. They know his lifestyle, so they'll probably film it during his offseason. Like this summer now. He's got months off now, and all he's got to do is go to train, you know, um, mini camps and all that kind of crap. And, oh, what does Travis Kelsey do in a mini camp? Right? He's like hanging out. You don't, you don't play players like that in a mini camp. You know what I'm saying? So it's like this is where somebody writing the story doesn't really understand what's going on. They're not going to do it in the middle of the season where he has to fly out. You know, that they wouldn't do that. And it's TV. Those kind of things are pre-recorded always, months in advance and all that. That's not really that fresh. You know? Um, if you are an 80s fan like I am, there's a very cool concert that is touring, and it's Wang Chung. And I, we saw Wang Chung, I don't know, about a year or two ago or something. I don't know when it was, but it, they were terrific. The Motels, which, dude, I would love to go see her, man. She is so good. Well, I'm, now, I'm for, now I'm brain farting um, her name. Ah, oh, damn it. Somebody help me out, the uh, Motels singer. But anyway, she's a fantastic singer. Naked Eyes and Emotion and Men Without Hats. So they're touring all over. You can check out the dates. Uh, Kentucky, Illinois, Chicago, Texas. Martha Davis, that's it. They're very good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Martha Davis. So the last date on the tour is June 23rd on a Sunday at the Broward Center where Wang Chung, the motels, Naked Eyes, and Men Without Hats will be performing. Not all of them perform in the same place. But the day before, June 22nd, they're in Clearwater, and it'll be the same four. And then the 21st, it'll be in the Florida Theater in Jacksonville, the same four. Okay? So no animation. We actually get a break because that's they have one song, Obsession, and that's it. You don't want to see animation. Give me a break. What else do we have going on? Uh, one more thing. I did see anybody catch Huey Lewis on with Jimmy Kimmel a couple nights ago. And uh, I've always been a Huey Lewis fan. I like him. He told a story that Jimmy brought up that the, the day they did uh, We Are the World and he was there and he talked about how terrified he was to be with all those great singers and all that kind of stuff. That that after that, Bob Dylan ended up writing a song for his band. And he put it on a tape and everything. So obviously it's, you know, it's not just lyrics. There was music to it or something, you know. And um, and he never recorded it. And he has the tape, but it's he's got like thousands of tapes. So he goes, if you go through them, you'll eventually find it. But I screwed up. And folks, let me tell you something. If Bob Dylan ever writes a song for you, please record the song. So they never recorded a song. And now he can't because the poor guy doesn't have hearing. And if you watch the interview, you can see it on YouTube. Uh, um, uh, Huey Lewis and, and Jimmy Kimmel, he puts a, a device on the table because he has a hearing aid that allows him to communicate with people because obviously that will then magnify, you know, the voice. And, uh, and so he told the story that after, apparently they became friends after, you know, or some kind of acquaintances after We Are the World, that freaking Bob Dylan wrote a song for Huey Lewis in the news, which like you think about it, there couldn't be two guys completely different two genres of music, completely different. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a cool interview. And he talks about how punk influenced him, which is something you would never think of with Huey Lewis. Uh, so I don't know if, uh, if you get a chance uh, and you can check it out, uh, it's all there. So that's some of the stuff that uh, I see in music and, uh, and entertainment. Oh, man. You, remember I tell you that an off, the, you know, one of the things I love about what we do here, and maybe it, it doesn't turn some of you all on, right? 
some of you are just dolphin fans, right? And you just have the blinders on. And if he's not talking dolphins, I'm not interested because that's it. That's all I can. And some of you appreciate that we talk heat and Marlins and Panthers and Canes and inter Miami and NFL and NBA and every, you know, all kinds of sports and, and things and entertainment and music and crypto and whatever and life and all kinds of stuff. Cause we do a talk show here and it's, different than just a show that's only about basketball or football or hockey or whatever that's a limited show and so when you listen to that that's all you're going to get and that's fine and that's there's nothing wrong with that but i always tell you that when you just do one sport or one topic it 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 won't last all year so i'm going through the nfl articles right and here's an article check this out okay sean i don't know if you can keep a straight face with this okay Uh, The article says four teams that David Bakhtieri can help lift to the Super Bowl. David Bakhtieri plays an average of three games a year. Three games a year. This guy's injured all the time. Yes, he was a great tackle in his early days with Green Bay. and uh, He has so many injuries. He's a free agent now. Why would you write an article for teams that David Bakhtieri can elevate to the Super Bowl when the guy can barely make it out of the preseason? And this is the problem with, you know, I, I listen, I don't feel like I'm not going to knock it too much because that's the guy's job, unfortunately. He's stuck writing football all year long, and you got to come up with some bullshit you know what I'm saying? And it's like, really, dude? I, I want, and that's this, this, this is why, you know, th- this is kind of why I'm here in a sense, you know, lo- locally. They're talking up Albert Wilson. I'm kind of laughing at it. Even the guys that I bring on are our guys. And you talk about, and I'm like, yo, bro, you're wasting your time. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of what I do now. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't need to sell you the BS. Why am I going to do that? I'm going to tell, oh, no, they really want Dalvin Cook. No, they don't. And I prove that over and over again. Oh, no, they're going to trade for Jonathan T- No, they're not. They're not going to give big for Jonathan T- Now, are the Colts willing to take uh, some big salary off the Dolphins? Then maybe you can make a Jonathan T- Remember, we talked about it. Like, there, there's a, yeah, sure, low-hanging fruit. Chris ain't stupid. He's not going to just take on salary and not going to dump some of it on you. What do you think? We have Mike Tannenbaum running this team now? And so I'm not here to, you know, I don't need to sell you. Hey, let's talk Dalvin Cook when it's a stupid subject that has very little substance to it because I know the inside of it. You know what I mean? And then I see this today. And I, it's not that I know anything in general of David Bakhtari that I inside or anything, but in the general stuff that I know is that guy can't stay healthy. And this is the bullshit that you guys are treated to constantly. I remember I saw an article during the regular season last year. Should the Dolphins sign Leo Collins? And I'm laughing like that's just filler. They're not. They have no interest in Leo Collins. They're not bringing Leo Collins. You know why? Because it was a subject back in the days of Tannenbaum and the draft and all that. Come on, man. Are we past that or what? You know. So I, these kind of things that go on constantly, I don't have time for this. And so I'm not going to do the, what's that called? The, uh, the, uh, I'm brain farting with the word, the hypotheticals. Well, let's, uh, what if they trade for Dalvin Cook? What should they give up? And I'll, I'll let the other media members waste your time on that and then just drag you along and tell you that. Robbie Chosen is an impactful player. Like, I don't know how I how any of you bought that. You know what I mean? I never bought that for one second. And constantly writing and people talking about it, and it's like, yo, bro, come on, man. Look at him. He's, you know, because he caught a couple passes in practice in underwears. Come on, man. Let's go. Let's move ahead. He had his time. Move on. Super limited. And so I get it. You got to write to fill space. You got to talk to fill space and you know i I get it in radio they really struggle to fill eight and ten minute segments and it's really really difficult for them to 
to fill an eight or 10 minute segment. So they've got to come up with something that makes no sense or podcasts that are limited to just one sport. So we got to come up with these fake topics, you know, and David Bakhtiari, I saw that and I almost like, wow, seriously, you wrote that? You're writing that David Bakhtiari can lift anyone to a Super Bowl. Are you out of your mind? You know, crazy stuff. Crazy. Uh, let's see. Big O, Robbie Chosen is uh, yesterday's. Well, try to tell uh, our local media about that during uh, training camp and last year. Trying to talk him up when, come on, man. It's Robbie Chosen, please, bro. Oh, man. Uh, you know, uh, let's see. How does one tackle make a team a bona fide? Well, it's not just that. You know what, dude? If you're telling me it's a healthy young tackle, you know, we got this guy that's, you know, whatever in his prime, fine. But you're mentioning a guy that can't play three games a year? I think he's played like 13 in the last four years. You do the math. So it's like, how do you have the balls to write that? That's the part that it's like, how, how do you write this? It's hilarious. You know, and you get people to just read that garbage. Will I be watching USA in Jamaica tonight? Yeah. Why not? The reggae boys? Yeah, I should I should have that on one of the TVs. I'll have the Panthers on too. I gotta watch my Panthers, bro. You know? You know a beat writer's running out of stuff when they put who won and failed the most in free agency. <laughs> well, that's just filler stuff, man. That's just filler stuff. You got it, you know, and that's when you're limited to what? So, you know, Big O, your show is a variety and variety is the spice of life. Yes, sir. Ocala Joe. That's the idea, my man. That is the idea. Remember, you can always make a donation through Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That is Cash Big O Show, Cash App or Venmo. Um, I'm giving you guys one more day. For winners five and six, we've already reached out to four winners. Now we got winners five and six for the family four pack. And you got to send us your full name, address, email. Okay. And you send it to my DM on Twitter or on Blue Sky at Big O Show or on Instagram and threads at Big O Radio Show. We will pick two more winners tonight. Two family four packs of tickets. I will, if you win, I will reach back to you and tell you you won, and then they will email you the tickets. But if you don't hear back from me, you didn't win. Okay. So that's how you know you won. So send it in. Uh, give you one more day for the final two pairs, and uh, hopefully you guys can enjoy the fair. So there you go. All right. Uh, we thank Steve Calibro. We thank all the great people here at Hylia Park who make it nice and easy. The Brunetti family, uh, John Brunetti Jr., always very supportive of our program, and we love them. Obviously, Sean Stanley, the man, the myth, the legend, that knows how to get it done every single day. We will uh, see you all uh, tomorrow morning, actually. Tomorrow we are in studio. Yay, 10 a.m. So we got an early show tomorrow. So... Uh, 10 to noon, 1 o'clock, I don't know. All depends on uh, what we got going on. Uh, we'll get, we'll have some guests. I know Manny Navarro and David Faronis, and I'm going to try to set up something else or two there. So we'll get a bunch of guests for you uh, tomorrow to uh, get you ready for the weekend and all of the sports action. And who knows, maybe we'll have uh, an OBJ signing uh, from now to tomorrow. If he leaves, eh, not as good, but we'll see what happens. Maybe he wants to meet with another team and then decide what he wants to do. Uh, you all be good out there. Be safe. Appreciate all of you for supporting us. If you made a donation, visit our amazing sponsors. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Hey, by the way, did I win AEW yesterday? I didn't win? Okay, I didn't win. Same bat channel. <laughs>